conscript group 14 faced a mighty foe in Gideon Lightward, a priest of Lathander turned undead minion of Zario. As the adventurers emerged from the ossuary beneath Elturel's Grand Cemetery, he sought to kill Uldar Ravengard, the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate, who seemed to be afflicted by two powerful entities waging a war in his mind. It was a desperate battle for the adventurers against hordes of undead, and they sustained grievous injuries while protecting the Duke. Just when all hope seemed lost, Silas Khan, summoning power from within his soul, finally shattered the power of Glazia, Lord of the Sixth, and threw off the shroud that had kept him from connecting with his goddess, Vandria Gilmaldrith of the Seldarim. When the Paladin's divine powers were restored, Conscript Group 14 was able to destroy Gideon Lightward and return to the Grand Cathedral, where they enacted a ritual to release Uldar Ravengard from the forces tormenting him. Uldar Ravengard, his face gaunt with lack of sleep and sustenance, his voice hoarse and dry, coughs as he looks around in bewilderment. Persephone, <clears throat> Persephone, is that you? It is. Hi, uncle. Where, where, where are my men? The only one left is here. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Is uh, um, is our Tabaxi with us? Locke Beauregard is with you. Yeah, and uh, so I point at Locke. He steps forward and bows. He says, oh, they, they all died defending you, Your Grace. Um, you have been um, not yourself for several days. And in that time... We were beset by many enemies, and I'm afraid they've all died. Violently, but... They're gone. Ular's eyes close. His mouth moves a little, and you can see he's mumbling a prayer. He reaches up to the helm that's still on his head, and... Ah, and he pulls it off and as he does you see two um, big red welts on his head where the metal had been pressing into him he pulls it off puts it down on his side with a clink ping a terrible price but perhaps not in vain forgive me I I have so many questions, but I must tell someone. You. He looks at Persephone and the rest of Conscript Group 14. What I have seen before my strength fails. Oh no! Oh no! I'm sorry. Does anyone have any water? Um, I... Uh, do we have any of the holy water left? Or do we uh, use it all? I would say you probably have a little left. Sure. We hand him that. Um, and does he look like he needs healing, like magical healing, or is he just having a rough moment? He looks exhausted. He looks like he hasn't really had any sleep or eaten anything in days, which tracks. Um, healing might help a little bit, but what he really needs is rest. Yay! I haven't won one yet on uh, oh. as Typhon. Just each out. Oh, oh. Uh, so, uh, uh, oh, oh. Does have any oh, oh. No, Hold up, hold up. Oh. Wait, wait. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. No. Roll off. Oh. Roll off. Uh -oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Ty goes I, to the girlfriend. No, I'll roll again. Wait, what? Oh, it's yours. Oh, 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 oh lucky lady 13. <laughs> All right. 
Very nice. That's right. Goes to your girlfriend. So, Uldar. <laughs> drinks. Uldar drinks. Thank you, the, um, Uldar drinks the holy water. Yes, thank you. After donning the helm, I could feel the power of Torm descend upon me. I saw a vision, a path forward, but it, it became warped and clouded by, by the other one. I recall an elven woman, armored, badly wounded, grasping a sword fit for an angel. There was an enormous demon lunging at her, but just before it reached her, she drove the sword into the ground. And as she did, a small golden creature, winged, made a sound like a thousand trumpets. The demon was hurled back as an alabaster palace rose up around the sword and the winged creature fled and took to the sky of a furnace. Where, where I watched as, as flesh seemed to rise from the ground like, like a giant scab covering what Yael and I had done. She was Sariel's most loyal and devoted Hellrider. I, I called on every ounce of goodness in my heart and raised the temple. But, but oh, oh, I killed her. I killed her. I didn't mean to, but so much power came out. I, I couldn't stop it. I'm sorry. I killed her. And Persephone, uh, Persephone, um, Lulu droops down onto the floor of the cathedral, her ears coming to cover her eyes as she burrows down in shame. I scoop her up and sort of hushedly say, say it's not your fault, it's not your fault. She weeps into you. That Uldar continues. Ah, yes, it was this creature by the gods. Yes, I saw her. She, she wandered the plains of Avernus in a daze. She encountered two strange bird creatures standing next to a, a, a contraption of some sort, a, a vehicle, I think. And Lulu stirs in your arms, Persephone, and looks up her eyes wide. Chuck and clunk! Chuck and clunk! I remember! I, I remember! I, I remember they took me, they took me to a place. Uh, mm, mm. Fort, Fort, Fort Knucklebone. Fort Knucklebone. Oh, Fort Knucklebone. Where is it? Do you know any more? And she turns to uh, Uldar, who's staring at her wide-eyed. He's like, no, oh, no, the vision faded after that. I, I saw the, I saw the two bird creatures apprehend her, and then nothing. Nothing but nightmares. Well, maybe I... Maybe I can see it. I, I think I, I might remember what it looks like. I'll go very high! And she immediately flies out of your arms and begins to fly up and up and up, and she goes smashing through one of the uh, stained glass windows. Glass begins to tinkle down all around and she just poof, and she goes out of the cathedral and you don't see her anymore. She'll be all right. We're in hell, you don't know that. Apparently, Lulu has survived far more than any of us have gone through yet. Not alone. She'll She's come probably back. faster and more resilient without us. And she'll come back. 
you begin to hear distantly a And she comes blasting back through the glass, trumpeting. I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. It's it's close. It's maybe t- 10 miles away. It's so close. We, we could go, we could go and we could, maybe, maybe they would know. Maybe, maybe they would know where to find it. Okay. Find, find the sword. Who has the map? Uh, the map of, of El Terrell. Um... Uh, Rhea, Rhea stands up. She says, uh, the, "The map of Elturel. I, I, I think Silas has it. Is that what I, you want, or did you want the the, the map of Avernus?" Well, I've, she says it's ten miles away. Lulu, is it is it in Elturel or is it? No, 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 um, no. It's 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 below. It's ah. it's on the surface of Avernus. So less than 10 miles away on the surface of hell. From the city? Which is how many feet in the air? More than 10? That's, yeah, okay. Hmm. Between all our magic, I'm sure we could figure out how to get to the surface if we needed to. Do we want to go to the surface? I thought the whole point was to try to get out of hell before we got to the surface. Or at least get these people out of here. What Ooh, makes you think this oh, What makes you think this second. sword is so important? Why What context does it have in your vision or your memory? I don't understand. We're chasing it's a good question. I I knew of the helm, and I sought to get some idea of how we could undo what had been done. And I prayed to Torm, and this is the vision he sent me. However we are to undo what has been done, somehow the sword in his divine eyes, is the way to do that. Divine guidance is not something I personally will take lightly at this point. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. And indeed, if nothing has changed, I, I can think of no way to bring everyone remaining in El Torel out of the hells. Perhaps a few score if we are able to find a, a mage powerful enough, but none have revealed themselves as of yet. But I, I beg your pardon, I am quite weary. There is so much to do and discuss, but it will avail no one if I if I cannot think. Hmm. I th- think we I think we could all use a rest if we are to travel down to the surface. Oh, are you sure? I mean, none of you have wings. We should find some wings for you. With a broken wing, we would fly if we must. But we will find a way. Mm -hmm. Mm, Good. Before we let another day go by, Jax, how much money do we have as a party? (laughs) Are you being honest with me? You know that Shora's life lies in this. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So it seems like our deal with... um, Amanazaro. Amanazaro. 
with Rumpelstiltskin yeah. will be uh, <laughs> fulfilled. Yes, we shall be able to pay off Donny Osmond. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's three. It's three. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a comfort. Then, in that case, I agree. Sleep would be good. Just point of order, are you saying 3,000 coins or 3,000 gold pieces, Jax? That's how much, yeah. Or he, he was willing to take equivalent wealth, so platinum pieces count and things like that. Great. My god. <laughs> you sneaky goblin. No, he hasn't, hasn't spent anything. No, he, no, he's brilliant. Yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> That's gonna happen. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, yeah, no. Uldar rises to his feet. Um, are there still survivors below? Yes. They need leadership too, my lord. Yes, many problems. Sleep first. As he comes by. Hmm. Don't push. I've it. seen far worse things, creature. And he steps past you, and he puts a hand out and rests it lightly on your shoulder, Persephone, and says, "Do you happen to know anything about?" my wife and daughter. I do. I saw them right before we left. Uh, it's a long story, but they are well and all right. Well, then there will be time for details later. Agreed. And he makes his way to the secret passage down into the catacombs. And you all retire there behind the rubble being anxiously guarded by Einjamin and the Druid and a score of other people. Over the course of the next hour, you will all achieve a long rest. Ooh. During this time, is there anything anybody wishes to say or do? Um, if we haven't, I wish to make sure that the uh, sword is returned to the tomb. Unless Rhea wishes to take it up in defense of Alterel. She, you, you find her standing by the tomb dangerous to be outside of the protection that is being offered meager though it be and she is looking at the sword and hears you come and says there is a, a great power in this weapon I think there is it frightens me, Falcon. What is it about it that frightens you? It feels final. Like a power I could have and to do something, a specific purpose. But if I allowed myself to fulfill that purpose, that it would require every, every bit of me and there would be nothing left. I don't know what I should do. We are oftentimes called upon to serve and very rarely 
at an hour of our choosing. This is a choice that you must make, and only you can make it. The fate of you lies before you in your hands, but no one will force you to take it up. You are in hell, Hellrider. And only you will see if you will find your way out. But I have faith. I have faith in you. I know you will make the right choice. And whichever choice you make, it will be the right one. She smiles and looks at you. I have faith in you too, Falcon. Thank you. I suppose we should get back. Yes. Otherwise, Jax will eat all the food. So I wonder if Persephone might not be able to summon some rats for him to eat or something. Uh. She turns and stops and then she takes the sword. I It feels strange to leave it here after it's been used. Maybe maybe there'll be a better time or or something something will elevate it itself. It is a weapon that was last used in the defense of El Torel. If not now, name me a better time to use it. You're right. So, you and her return to the rest of the group. Anything else for you, Falcon? Um, Falcon's gonna, uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and, uh, fill my water skin with that holy water, and, well. uh, I'll take my, I'll take my long rest, uh, if this hasn't taken up too much of that, and then whatever le time left to me, Sean, in that two-hour respite that we get during a long rest, um, I'm, I'm gonna pray. All right. If anything comes up, uh, with other people speaking or doing anything, we can come back to you. This is not the end of this night. I just wanted to know if there was anything specific that you, you wanted to accomplish. No, I appreciate that. So, right. so I'll be at the fountain praying. Okay. Uh, Persephone, anything that you would like to do or say? Yes, I'd like to talk to Lulu to call her over to me. And I'll say, okay. you said before that you could still feel Rim. Is that still true? Yes. Is he yes, close? Yes, he's close. And, and it's not fading and nothing... He's not weakening or anything like that it's it's hard i don't understand what happened i don't either and i hate it and i'm so afraid the longer we let his body be hostage then the less likely we are to get him back i'm sorry i don't i don't know much about things like that but i know he's He's not here, but he hasn't passed on either. That's something. That's something. It's the only thing keeping me from despairing completely. Oh. It will be all right. Well, it has to be. Even if, even if the worst happens. He had a good soul. There are beautiful places to run and hunt. I'm sure his soul will make its way there. Eventually. And Persephone nods, but just kind of silent cries. Nothing like weeping, but just kind of exhausted and sick at the thought of of, of one of the party gone. I like your sword. I really like my new sword, too. I still have to name it. Ooh! Hmm. I've been keeping track of the things that that it accomplishes, but nothing strings together a name with that yet. I 
don't remember if Zarya's sword had a name. You keep coming back to that. That was so important. <laughs> now I know what it was, but I don't know why. To use that much power, it must have been so important. Do you know where she got it? Celestia? It was... It was given to her by... By someone. I don't remember. You remembered a lot today, though. Man is very nice. He can be, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're my friend, Persephone. Me too. And I'm glad you're here. You've saved us many times. I don't remember much, but I do remember I was so lonely. And having friends is helping me a lot there's really no point if there are no friends is there i completely agree it's very powerful and and i think maybe part of the reason i forgot is that i i didn't have any and it's so important to hold on to your friends persephone because if you don't then if it's the same thing that happened to me might happen to you, you'll forget. Right. And speaking of holding on to friends and keeping them safe, please stick with those ranged attacks. Oh, my nose. Yes. Okay. Are you sure? Only if you have no other option. We'll try. Keeping you safe is just as important as keeping any of the rest of us safe. Hmm. I think that what you all are doing is very important. It might be more important than me, Persephone. It's relative. They seem just as important to me, those two things. Well, we could both be important. That's right. Hmm. Well. Have a good sleep. You too. And do sleep. I don't know when we'll get to sleep again. Anything else, Persephone? Nope. Okay. Islin. Islin uh, watches Lulu depart Persephone and walks up to Persephone. Uh, I have something with your name on it. I was going through Rim's things, and well, I suppose this is for you. And she produces out of his bag a very small bag of coffee wrapped in a <laughs> ribbon with your name on it. Oh, and she cries immediately. I've had this in the upper city. It's rather exquisite. He uh, must care about you greatly. We've served important functions in each other's life. Thank you for passing this on. And you can tell that she's touched by the kind gesture, but also so uncomfortable and mad uh, talking to what should be Rim, but isn't. She can sense it, and she says, I know you have very little reason to trust me, but I want out of this body just as much as you want him back into it. 
I say we work together to accomplish that goal. Completely agree. He kept a journal, you know. I don't I've know been... that we have any right to read it. Oh, that's a girl's answer. This is a brand new body for me. I need as much information as I can get. Did you know he hardens his scales in battle to prevent it from being pierced? Not any information I could get from any of you. This is important information, but the bit that I thought you'd find interesting. He's a loner. He grew up isolated. He thinks of you as the sister he always wanted. Have a good rest. And she walks away. <clears throat> and by the time she walks away, but is a little too far away, she turns around to say thank you, but it's Islan's already gone a little too far to hear it. Uh, as she's walking away from you, Persephone, she catches uh, she catches Typhon's eye and uh, gestures for him to join her in a room that's outside of everyone. Uh, are we in the room underneath, Sean, now? So the catacombs is a large space with many large pillars and there are tombs through it and there's the burbling of the uh, of the uh, of the water. If you wanted to go someplace private, you would have to go beyond the barricades. Uh, um, I think where I will gesture for Typhon to join me is that dining room that was uh, underneath that big... All right, yes. Away over here yes all right um as you are going um going out you see uh seldern the druid watching you all and says what are you doing just having a chat with a friend a it's private. dangerous out there you know do you want any company Bringing the company that I want. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean, I, it won't be but a minute. Rest yourself. Make a persuasion check. I wasn't prepared to make checks. Hang on a second. <laughs> oh, it was almost really good. Uh, oh, uh, yes, it was. With a nine, he says. I mean, the entire group in here is is at risk. I mean, unless you have a very good reason for going out, I, I can't just let people leave. Oh. She gives an exasperated sigh and rolls her eyes. Is it really your call? Well, I, it's, it's as much my call as anyone. I'm on duty for guarding. I, I appreciate what you all have done for me, but I... No, no, fine. You're Can't very you just wise. tell me what you need? Uh, Eastland makes the subtle gesture uh, that you make when you cast a message spell, Typhon. And, okay. uh, and uh, she just says, thank you for your concern. You, you're actually quite right. Uh, I'll just retire elsewhere. And she walks away. I think we will have to just simply find a quiet corner. The, I'm afraid, well, we've already discovered that these telepathic messages can be eavesdropped upon. Yeah, I know, but there's no safe way to leave the group and I don't want to tell you what I have to tell you in front of these prying eyes. Is there somewhere like we could go where if there's like a one entry in, and if I set my imp on guard, it would give us some that, that thing, modicum that, of privacy. That place we crawled into and saw the demon, but if you don't go all the way. Unfortunately, the Jax destroyed that lock. Oh, that's right, that's right. Um, You could try to sneak out. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, Actually, no, I... Uh... Create a diversion or something and, and, and get out that way. I have Misty Step, and I still have spells that I've left uncast. So uh, I'm going Can to do that. I don't know. Oh, Typhon, I don't know if you have anything left. Mm, I can't. Um, I can't Misty Step. 
I don't have anything left. No. Yeah, yeah um, I figured as much. Can Persephone see what that they tried to leave and were rejected, having like couldn't couldn't leave? It wasn't it wasn't a big uh, kerfuffle, but if you were paying attention, you would have probably noticed a little bit of something. But it's well, up to you whether or not you were paying attention. Just on, I think she's paying half attention okay. and kind of gets the idea that they want a moment. And um, uh, so I'll start playing a song of rest. Uh, I, it, nobody needs to roll anything for it because it'll be a long rest, but uh, just the song of El Terrell softly so that it doesn't disrupt any of the other people already sleeping, but um, to hopefully draw some eyes or if not, whatever. Right, yes. Um, it is successful. Uh, Selturn's attention is drawn, and although he's definitely still keeping an eye on this uh, barricade at the north, there is a barricade at the south where there are fewer people, and sneaking out that way might actually be possible now that there's this distraction going on. Uh, I will head that way with Typhon, uh, if you are willing to go. Mm-hmm. All of right. Course. Shall we stealth out of here? Roll your stealth. <laughs> Maybe I can counter your... Oh, jeez. Well, 12. Um, we make it past the commoners, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you do a little bit of checking. Um, there are members in your party who will probably see you go if they are paying attention. That's okay. Nobody seems to be watching you. All right. We will sneak out. I give uh, Persephone a slight smile as we walk past as a thank you. She kind of like shrugs, shrugs it off. Typhon, your choice of traveling companions is beginning to make more sense to me. They're remarkably able. The goblin, where on earth did you find that little loose cannon? All places the Temple of Ogma. A little experiment <laughs> from an overeager gnome, so I'm led to understand. Oh. Though his body count is spread between the evil and innocent alike, it might seem, or at least the uncondemned. Hmm. So, well, I'm not so sure Mr. Pebblemoss would be thrilled with what has happened, but. He is incredibly useful, so if a little sense. difficult to focus at times. <laughs> Just think of think of him as a tool with a spark of chaos incarnate. He's incredibly powerful when directed the right direction. Just don't stand in front of him. Yes, yeah, so a wise bit of advice. And you weren't kidding. You've grown stronger yourself. That lightning you conjured was <laughs> impressive. I realized at some point that we were in the midst of a storm here. There's no turning back. We had to ride the currents. We'll be swamped if we, or we stay afloat, but we cannot change the waves here now, at least not yet. Well, it seems my hopes for escaping have been dashed. So I suppose I'm to travel with you as long as I must. You know I'm not as one As long as you must, really. <laughs> You know I have no desire to remain in hell any longer than I have to. But since this is the only way forward for the time being... Look, Typhon, you know I'm not one for being overly effusive. Just as much as I know you loathe being subjected to it, but... I'm glad you found me. When Elturel fell, I felt so... alone. I was scared. Well, I'm still scared, if I'm being honest, but much less so now that you're here. I've missed you. There was a part of me that foolishly thought this new body of mine might change the nature of our friendship. I hope that's not the case. Certainly not. It's nice to I, I find it a little strange as he looks <laughs> up to the what nine foot blonde woman or whatever six, six. she's able to shrink him shrink herself down a foot 
shorter okay, so. rims. I don't die. Got it. But um but uh well I look forward to seeing the spider again. <laughs> it's nice to hear that out loud. I do sincerely hope this body is a short lived re uh, residence. Look, I wanted to get you away from the others. For obvious reasons, you're the only one I have to trust. I presume you may have suspected this already, but she reaches into Rim's bag and she produces the soul coin. The dragonborn is in here. Based on what the bard said about her contract, she's on the hook for a soul coin. The 3,000 gold worth of treasure is an alternative only in the event that she doesn't find one. I wouldn't be surprised if the devil put the gold in the contract just to ease her conscience in dealing with humanoid souls as currency. So I think we should make sure she doesn't find this one. There's no point in putting her in the position of making the choice between her friend's soul and that of a hundred survivors. Besides, the coin is mine, not hers. This is the only currency I have down here, and I'm not about to needlessly surrender it. I understand. Though, I will caution you. Uh, he is stoic and, well, uninteresting at times, but Rim is powerful in his calmness. The anger of a gentle man, one might say, is something to be feared. Look, I'm more than happy to return the behemoth into his own body, but find I, can, I can find a more suitable one of my own. But if your companions had the choice between him and me, you know the choice they'd make. I need to protect myself. I and will you. I will make sure that that doesn't happen. Hmm. And if the moment comes where you're subjected to something, I think I might have, well, a last ditch effort to get you out of here, assuming there are no other tethers holding you to this plane. It is That's... something I think I have just now about mastered. Mm. I'll hold you to And if you feel my spell take hold of you, pushing you somewhere you don't want to go, trust me. You're the only one I do trust, Typhon. That's good. And while we're on that subject, the bow the powers, the deal. <laughs> what have you done, Eastland? One revelation at a time, my dear man. But trust that the bond that I formed might be necessary for your party after all. Cryptic. Baby steps, dear. And she motions back to the gap in the rubble. Okay. Go back in. It's well done, by the way, with the bard. She's not fast to trust, but she is, well, indomitable in defending those she considers a friend. Your entire party seems that way. It's a bit insufferable, in a charming sort of way. Who else would you want around you at a time like this? Fair point. Just make sure they still see you that way. Hmm. Whatever it takes for now. I believe they're beginning to rub off on you. You made a pun earlier, Typhon. Oh no! Oh, I swear no! if you make more of those, I might have to sacrifice my soul to Zario myself. <laughs> Mm. Good night, dear. Good night. Mm. Very nice. Um, Typhon, anything you wish to do? That was about it. That was about it. Now, how many hours would I have to trans... Did you say we're just getting a... a... A short rest in an hour's time, or we had an no, hour. It's, a, it's it is a, it's a, a long, long rest, rest in an hour's time. Long rest with two hours. Yeah. Okay. Would there be any time to do a copy, copy, or is spells? that just sure. the? Okay. You just let me know how how many. Uh two. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Another gift from Uglug. Another 85. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh, you guys! Yay. So uh. that is a, um, a a greater healing potion. Um, nice. And I do believe there are quite a few of these now in play. I've got one. Okay. <laughs> oh, darn it, Persephone! Wow! Oh. oh! Oh! Son of a butt nugget. Um, who all has one? I do not. Mm -hmm. I had a healing potion, but I used it. Okay, Falkron, you've got one. Mm -hmm. Silas, you have a little one. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I found one in Rim's pack. I was going through his character sheet, Sean. But right. I assume that that would be... It's not in Islands, but I assume that she has access to it. Right, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Jax, you um, discover a in, in amongst the piles of coins, somehow a greater healing potion has appeared in your pack. <laughs> um... <laughs> Technically, yes, it is food. Yeah. Don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay. Um, Jax, anything you want to do? Uh, before we move on, I okay. did get that inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't Crazy. get it. Thank you. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, Bard. Uh, where was it? Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Got it. Is it in the? I'm sorry, Jade. Is it on chat? Is it in the chat for <laughs> Discord or where? It's in Zoom. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Let me just check here. Do -do 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 -do. Close chat. Open chat. Okay. Just be careful and not spoil what you're sending privately three times in a row. <laughs> right to everybody. Jesus. <laughs> you can... I, uh, that's something that could be tried. Yeah. S sweet, sweet Peter. Uh, it was it was not my finest moment. But um, I have to know. So, Jax is doing something clandestine. Um, uh... I have a question when we sort of, when you have a moment, Sean. Sure. Like technically, I, as player knowledge, I'm led to believe that the border ethereal does not extend through the nine hells, that it is only. That is correct. Um, there are ways to get into the nine hells, but almost exclusively, unless you use the gate spell the only way to get into the Nine Hails from uh, other planes is the River Styx. Correct. So uh, spells that would um, transition you to the Ethereal Plane would not function like the... Like... There, they would, there, would, there would be strange effects, at the very least. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. You came back. I do, I do. He's been very naughty. No, I wouldn't do that. He's my friend. That's weird. You're weird sometimes. <laughs> oh. Yes, I still have that. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Wow. Thank you. Mm, that, that, uh, that man over there, and she points at the druid. He, he makes these berries. They don't taste very good, but I've been eating them. Tastes like vegetables. It is disgusting. Okay. I gave him a little nibble of the, the, um, the berry. He liked it. Where did you get all these amazing things? She looks kind of sad for a second. She says, my mother would have liked this. She's touching the necklace. They're dead, aren't they? Thank you, but it's not quite the same. That's a pretty whistle. Oh. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you chat with Shora. Um, anything else from you, Jax? Okay. Um, Silas. Nothing special. I'm just going to try to be invisible. Um, you, uh, stand guard. You speak with any of the NPCs. No, everybody seems occupied at the moment, so I'm just going to uh, have some inward introspection time and maybe have a little prayer. All right. Um, so we will end our or, RP session. Oh, oh. Before we go uh, to sleep, though, after Persephone um, uh, finishes her song, um, she walks close up to Silas but kind of realizes he's praying and and stands there to see if he talks to her first because she doesn't know if she is allowed to interrupt him doing that. It's not like a trance or anything, so you become At aware point, that there's I'm somebody sure being, you know, like, somebody is, uh, is in within your personal ah, bubble. Big attack. Ah. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who speaks first? You speak first? I speak first? I speak first. Uh, I always speak first. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, an incredible thing that happened to you on the battlefield. Are you all right? I'm, as I said when we got here, I'm better than I have been in quite some time. How did you figure out what to do? I think that once I stopped trying so hard to figure out what to do, I think once I stopped trying so hard, that's when good things happen. That's usually true. Now, I actually don't know what to do with this. Does it hurt? As hold up a hand that is scarred and blackened and the armor is charred and mm. enough to give me an extra point of armor class. 
Um, Does it hurt? It hurts to look at it. It hurt when it happened. It is said that my goddess feels every pain that elves feel. That she suffers the pain of every wound. I must say I'm, I'm quite embarrassed that I would cause her pain through all of those things that happened. I don't know that you have anything to be embarrassed for. I'll be honest, I I hated your god a little bit when I saw what she was doing to you. Obviously, I was wrong to do that because it wasn't her shutting you out. But you never faltered. Not once. At least from what I could tell. I have to say that I did. Because I had this feeling, Persephone, that I had to somehow prove myself worthy. And isn't that a bit one-sided? Isn't it, after all, her choice? I couldn't make her feel a certain way about me. I couldn't cause her to feel a certain way about me. The moment I existed in her view, her mind was already made. It's a bit foolish to think that I could change her mind. I think that blocked me from her. But to go from a feeling of emptiness to the feeling of divine purpose. It just makes me wonder how I could have gone without this feeling for so long. Again, I'm embarrassed, but it doesn't matter now. Unfortunately, I still think I owe a soul to someone. <laughs> so I think I have to decide after we save this city and everyone in it, I think I may have to hunt a demon. Well, if we survive, I'm sure we'll help. Oh, we will. Look at what we've gone through so far. And yet now we're going further into hell, but at least we have a paladin to bring along with us. That's okay. We just have to figure out about Rim. And her face goes dark uh, at that. So it's, you're right. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you and your instincts about Islam. I can't say that she caused that to happen. She certainly no. benefited. That's the issue. But you know, when Falkron fell, I had an opportunity to help. Lulu says that Rim isn't far. She doesn't know what she means when she says it, but she's sure of it. Oh, I really hope that's right. She seems so sure that's the only thing that's keeping me from completely despairing. 
Yeah. Think of it this way. You could have been the one that told Rim to break the coin. But I wanted him to. I thought it was good advice when you said it. You can't take that responsibility. Yes, I can. Well, at least not alone. Thank you. You'll have to stay in contact with Lulu. If she can sense Rim, then that is a source of hope. I will. I feel responsible for her being here, which is probably wrong, but I think you understand about taking responsibility that isn't necessarily your own. When I was a child, I thought responsibility was an equivalent to hell. And here we are in hell talking about responsibility. Okay, you might have been onto something there. Hmm. So how is your family? He, uh, the crown and all that. We didn't have any moment to speak other than what you everybody heard. He seems tired and hungry, which makes sense, but other than that, no family reunion. Also, I've never been that close with my uncle. Uh, nothing, no bad blood or anything, just um, someone I don't see a lot. I miss my parents, though. Yes, quite. I hope that his presence gives Rhea something to latch on to. Hmm. That's true. I didn't think of it that way. Hmm. But we both need rest. Agreed. I'm going to pray for a bit longer. I'm not really the praying type, but have at it. One day, Persephone, I hope that you do pray and I hope that there's an answer. Well, I mean, I did get a sword from a god, and I love that, so maybe I should take it up a little more often. Just watch out you don't become some type of Ponzi running around. We wouldn't want that. No promises. I do not think I like this fellow very much. He's just teasing. Mm. In his way. <laughs> All right. Anything else, you two? All done. Good. You all settle in for a long rest. However, before you do, Islin, as you head down for the night, you go through your things. You cannot find the soul coin. King Goblin. Oh my god. Oh, okay. What was your one more thing? <laughs> oh, shit. All right. This coin has charges that accompany it. Oh, fuck. As you have it in your hand you become aware that there is a presence within it and if you wish you can expend some of its energy to make contact with the soul inside it oh god <laughs> i think he already did i think i think <laughs> yeah now, now he knows so you can make that that question, if it's a legitimate question and you want it answered, you can expend some charges in this coin. You don't know. It is possible for you to speak with Rim at this moment. It, in some capacity. Oh, 
What would Jax do? Oh, what that's would hard, Jax dude. do? That's hard. <sighs> No, I know, I know that now, and now you know. So knowing that, as you are forming the question in your mind, you begin instinctively to understand that there is a presence here, and you have the power to communicate with it if you want. <laughs> there was a shady looking NPC that might know something. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak to Typhon. Uh -oh. I know. I'll speak okay. To Typhon. <laughs> So hey. Falcon, you're there. You're there praying, and <laughs> and Jax runs, finds you by your scent. Up runs Jax. Yes, Jax. No, Jax. You already ate it. I know. Was it food? Did you steal it? Ah, <sighs> okay. Who did you steal it from? No. Jack's rim isn't here. You know that. <laughs> Shit. All right, so DM, in previous discussions, like with when chatting with the demon and like the soul coin so like falcon would know that this is not an ordinary coin oh yeah right okay yes it is black okay. um it has strange sigils on it and just looking at it it radiates a power that makes you nauseous nauseated I can hear you. No, I heard you. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. And you're yeah. just fine. Mm. Uh oh. Say a few words, Jax. Yeah. Jax? May I see that? Fifty gold coins. Oh, no, that's the, how is Shora? She's good. And how's Mouse? She, well, that's good. She shouldn't. No, you don't eat pets, Jax. We're getting off topic. Jax, the coin. May I? How do you speak to him? Will you just sit? Jax, Jax, give me the coin. Just All me. right. So as this exchange is going on, uh, both of you with your passive perceptions as high as they are, even though you're distracted, you see lurking in the shadows someone watching you. Is that what you meant by rim from rim? Hmm. All right. Roll the 29 on stealth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> no, no. So you, can, you can do lots of things. How many people can be the 29 on stealth? Um, okay, so DM, I, I, I've got this coin. He says I can talk to Rim. So, yes, as you um, hold it, you instinctively understand that there are 
Uh, there is a soul within this. Um, and as you hold it, this nauseated feeling washes over you. And okay. although you've been praying and you, you're looking forward to a long rest, you feel heavier. There's a weight that this coin is putting on you. It is pure evil. And there are charges attached to it. There is a, a finite amount of power that it has that it can be used for. One of the things that it can be used for is to contact the soul within. I see you contemplating and I'm going to step out of the shadows. And I, uh, Jax, I grab you by the scruff of your, uh, of your shirt. You Make are it. a damned fool. Put oh, sorry. him down. Give it back immediately. You don't know what you have in your hands. Release my goblin. I drop him and I, uh, and I immediately go to, uh, snatch it out of your hands. Uh, which I presume oh, I see. In fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you say, you say, <laughs> release my goblin. And Islan puts her goblin down. Got a down, 20. And then, with a roll of a natural 20, so a 35. Yeah, with a 35. A 35. Like, your stealth, Jack. <laughs> check. Yeah. Oh, it's in your ear. Oh, no. Now it's in your other <laughs> ear. Oh, it, now it's gone. <laughs> yeah. It disappears That's not from his your ear. Hand. It Ooh. disappears from your hand so fast. You think? I mean, who else could it have been? Who else could it have been? Somebody close must have taken it, but you have no idea who, for sure. For all you know, it just disappeared out of your hand. Jackson, in in the call? space of a single blink. What you had in your hand was something of pure evil. And yes, I suppose the cat's out of the bag. That is your friend. I kept it hidden so you wouldn't have to surrender it to the demon that Persephone made the bargain with. Now keep your mitts out of my bag and I won't gut you like a fish. If you were to expend a charge, I don't know what would happen to your friend's soul. Believe it or not, we both have his best interests at heart. Leave the coin alone and keep this from Persephone. She needs not know this information. You Persephone. I suppose we all probably gather by that yep. point. <laughs> so at that friends. point, everybody knows. We're having ourselves an interesting moment here. Wherein Eastland knows the exact location of Rim. Care to inform Eastland? Just condemned your friend. And she holds out the coin in her hand. He's here. And if I understand the bounds of your contract, he's now his. No, we can pay 3,000 gold instead. Really? Is that what he said? 3,000 gold unless you find a soul coin. That's what I remember you telling me. Please tell me that's not actually correct. I, it I is don't. correct. Well done, goblin. Silas steps up. I don't believe that Persephone found a soul coin. Mm -hmm. That is up to his interpretation. The exact I words of the contract were, unless you have a soul coin. Let's Rich. hope that the soul coin being in my possession is enough to not put his life in jeopardy. Shall we? What if, were what you if... still Rim, there might be some validity to this. However, as you are not, I have to say, I don't know that you'd be considered party to what Persephone would have. 
I, I can, can speak only for you. That's the case. But I know the ways of death how did, contract. How did you come into possession of the coin? I had Is this what you did? Did you bargain? You. The coin is mine from a previous bargain, yes. And the soul that was in it before we went to the infernal machine was not Rim's. When I went to power the machine to get us and the souls of all of these trapped Elterillians out, that soul was expended and your friend now resides within it. If you want to keep him alive and to transfer him back into his body, the soul must be protected and it can't be stolen out of other people's packs. How does one come to all this knowledge? Having just arrived in hell recently. She just doesn't say anything and stares at the goblin. She's furious. She has had a head start. You recall she got here a bit before us. Some of us are more apt to listen to our surroundings, to understand, to learn. You have to put it somewhere where I I legitimately don't have it when I speak to the devil. It was. As long, as long as it's in someone else's possession, you don't have it. But Silas makes a very good point, Eastland. Cards on the table. We can't. How did you... Sorry, go ahead. Can't what? I, I, I misinterpreted where your sentence was going to go. Keep talking. No, it's all right. How do you know so much of these coins and the devils and the deals? Silas knows only too well the cost of such knowledge. You can look at his arm and it will show you. I tried to hide this coin to protect the soul of your friend. I now guard this information to protect the rest of you. I advise you not to press me further. Uh... DM, can I make an insight check to see if she's telling the truth? Sure. With an 18? With an 18? She is telling oh. the truth. She's telling the truth? Okay. All right. Typhon, anything you wish to say on behalf of your friend? I, I trust her word and yours. Trusted her from the beginning, I've made that much clear. She gains nothing from hiding this. She gains nothing from keeping Rim separate from the rest of us. She'd be in a worse off position if it wasn't for all of you, just as, just as I would. It would be foolish, and Eastland is no fool. All right. As he says that, he also glares at Jax. <laughs> Thavius Krieg, says Rhea, standing behind you, choice, glowering. Choice. Choices have been made. We have... Uh, Persephone looks at Islin and says, Answer me honestly. If I tried to get that coin from you, would you allow me to have it? And she looks very specifically in her eyes when she asks that. Tell you earnestly, if you were to have it in your possession, it would only do you harm. That's not and the question. And, she, and she's like looking at you like... To ask the question it. again. What was the what was the question? And she says, "If you if I were to try and take that from you, would you allow me to have it?" I would, as long as I knew that you recognized you were putting your friend's soul in danger. And be advised, if you try to speak to him within the coin, I don't know what it would do to his soul. I don't want no. that. 
I want to be able to tell this I want to be able to tell this demon with no shadow of a doubt that I couldn't possibly get my hands on a soul coin if I tried. Oh, well then in that case, I got you like a fish. <laughs> Hope that works. Silas's glaive thunks into the ground. It's out, it's ready. It's not being brandished. Just a very loud metal hitting the flagstone. And I mean, to be fair, I don't think there's any fish gutting necessary. I literally, the coin just disappeared out of my hand. Jax. Dax. F- focus. Focus. I know. I know. Look, there is an alternative to all of this nonsense. If we can find a suitable place to hide all of these survivors, who cares if he reveals the location of the hidden door? Or in As the a matter of fact, that maybe that's not a bad idea. What about the dwarf you encountered? There are survivors there. Would it be a terrible idea to remove everyone here and bring them to another location in Elturel? You want to move all of the refugees out of this hidden underground catacomb and walk them across Elturel, which is currently being pulled down to the surface of hell, mind you. No, you're right. It's much better to have a devil open the door and have them all burn. The devil would have to get through the door to begin with. And Jax also destroyed the lock to get in here. Oh, yeah, plus yes. There's a, Stop him. Plus there's a fountain of holy water in here. <laughs> so trifles for that. Uh, that did you, did you told me of the horde of de- devils and demons that were out there beyond that door. Do you think a simple puddle of holy water would stop that monstrosity? You're a fool. We have two options. We try, we have them stay and try and pay the 3,000 gold like the plan was always. Or we take them out and that seems worse somehow. I think there is a third possibility. It's a means of currency in this realm. If we could find another. Another soul coin? Another soul coin. Do we have the faintest idea where we could find one? Probably not up here. Just make sure everybody understands the time frame. After tonight's long rest, that is two midnights gone. So we have two more days. Mm-mm. One more. No, no. I we, I oh, two more. Four, four, yeah, four days. I that's know, right. Three thousand gold. Four, gold. Four days. Got it. Yep. Three thousand or five thousand? Three. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> um, I'm altering the deal. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Persephone looks at Typhon and says, well, we might as well try that. You do realize that's an evil act you're considering. I'm I'm sorry. The third option was to sell someone else's soul to the devil? It's not so much like selling someone's soul. If he's already been minted into the infernal currency. No, we don't no, even typhon. know what soul it is. We know this soul. Well, it is soul. There is, there is nothing. There is no soul. There's no energy to 3,000 gold. Literally throw the blood money at the demon and let it be done. Well, of course that's the, that's the first choice. But and it would he... have been a perfect plan if you had just trusted me. I hate to agree with her, but she, she's right, Falcon. I shouldn't oh, have known I, about this. I can't imagine why I wouldn't have trusted you when I discovered that you had the soul of my friend trapped in a coin on your possession the whole time after everyone asked, where's Rim? And you conveniently went, mm-hmm. Again, your your knowledge, our knowledge. Let's may... hope your righteousness brings you comfort when your friend's soul is consumed by the devil. That won't happen. There are many Jax that has graciously offered his soul. No, that's I don't accept either. that. No, Jax. But, but how does one put a soul into a coin? 
How does that happen? Transfer of your friend's soul into this coin is truly unknown to me. I believe it has something to do with the intense energy of the machine. That is all I know. Could we try and make a religion check about the sure. source of soul coins? Yep. Uh, with advantage, because you did get a little information from um, Corcoran Pebblemouse on this. Mm -hmm. The small old... <laughs> uh, 18. 18. So they are forged in Minaros, uh, which is uh, fourth level of hell, I believe. Not 100% sure of that. Uh, one of the layers of hell. Um, and it's a horrible process. Um, to own, to hold a soul coin is to feel, at least in some respect, the soul that was within it. And none of them are happy to be where they are. Um, the actual process must involve forces that you have no understanding of how to control. Um, fairly simple for anybody to get someone's soul out of their body, but it usually involves killing them. Holding on to that soul, well, that's even more difficult. Changing the soul from its natural state into something completely different, binding it to something in this way, magic on an order of magnitude that you are that is far far beyond your power and you gather that Islin might be right the nature of the transmutation teleportation um, magic of the circle in flux as it was being corrupted by a connection to the abyss various surges of energy, death. It seems that as Islin was killed, her soul replaced the soul that was in the coin originally. And then when Rim ripped it up, his soul and Islin's were switched. Helmet made the same kind of magic. I don't think any one of us are, are dark or sinister enough to know this process or to even attempt it and to have it be remotely successful. But I would attempt it. I can think of one person that might deserve it. Eastland just rolls her eyes. No one deserves this. This is suffering unimaginable, which is why we will pay the demon the 3,000 gold and be done with it. I agree with you entirely, but what if the demon doesn't believe me when I say I don't have a soul coin? But you don't have a soul coin. And then if we can, even better, if we just make sure that Eastland is nowhere near the deal at the time. I hope it works that way. You see the problem, though, if it doesn't. Which is well, why I think having a second plan, another soul coin available, would be... <laughs> Typhon, we, we lucked into having this soul coin, and it came at a terrible cost. Uh, let me correct you. This is my coin. Exactly. So... Well, let's let's, let's ask just, the man himself, shall we? Flint says the stone. We can't. What if it hurts him? Ah, uh, yes. No, Fine. not the coin. The no, stone. no, no. The uh, pebble moss. He he already told us. To, I, I mean, I, uh, well, be careful because if you give away our mild deception. Oh my God! Yes. No, no, no. Well, I believe it's... We'll even sell it, just soul coin. Yeah. In need of soul coin. Mm -hmm. Readily available. Tradable. Mm -hmm. Lease to own. Well, lease to 
<laughs> uh, I'm not familiar with that phrase. It sounds magic. It sounds <laughs> diabolical. It's, it's more an upper city thing you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Eastland, how how did you come into possession of a soul coin? Or how did it become you? This information will not do any good for you or your party. At some anyway. point in the future, it may. And at that time, I will share it with you. But I but, haven't even told Typhon intentionally. We've we've been told though this is the this is a currency of the hells, yes? Mm-hmm. What uh, how could well maybe worth I'm, it I'm to sorry. at least try. I, I agree. I understand, but there's one person here who's been given a soul coin, and she is so far unwilling to tell us how she came, it came to her possession or how one even gets one. You're not very curious, are you? Your your prodding has already put your friend's soul in jeopardy, and yet you continue. I agree, Falcron. I I hate everything about the situation, and I wish we'd never met Islin. But but we just stop. It's it's your own righteousness that's drawing these questions. It's not its not for Rim. Look at me, Falker. I don't want the destruction of your friend's soul any more than you do. Perhaps it's for more selfish purposes on my case, but the interest is the same. So while we have a shared interest, I please request with all that I have within me to trust me. Is that a persuasion or an insight check that somebody could make who's skilled at such things? I'll I'll do it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm not. What uh, you can certainly make an insight check, but what are you insight checking specifically? It will help to know what, what <laughs> it will help her to know what she's saying is the truth or what is a lie. I guess the. Um... No, I'm not. I'm, never mind. I'm not proficient in that. Uh, just that if she, if we should trust her. So she, she, she said, "You just have to trust me." What are you inciting about that? It would actually be the prior part where she said that she does not want Rim ah. to be destroyed. That part, not Got the it. trust me part. The okay, yeah, make an insight check if you wish, Silas. I can fail that. <laughs> <laughs> with a five I believe be, her <laughs> seems to be um, upset angry worried um, but she legitimately does not wish harm on Rim and despite yourself you find yourself thinking that she at least believes to be that she is telling the truth when she says that the way circumstances have worked out are beyond her control and she's as keen to undo things as anyone however now that you all know that this exists there's a complication um and i believe we are going to be taking our bio break there retcon back to uh, jax's theft <laughs> Oh yes. <laughs> Too late. Ah. Too late. He rolled a he rolled a twenty nine on his stealth, and then he rolled a twenty one on his um, sleight of hand to get it, and then that yeah. beats passives. The, so the goblin tells a story. <laughs> <laughs> Always. So unless there's any further, is there anything anybody wishes to do before we? all go grumpily to bed. Because it doesn't, you know. Did somebody want to contact Corker and Pebbles? Oh, I, I mean, do think we should do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will, so... Uh, if I remember correctly, the uh, stone has already been used in this waking day, so we cannot it, do it until tomorrow. Has, has it? it? Ha hasn't been today. What was no, the last... I think you're right. It was oh, used... It I think she's trying to deceive us again. That's what no, I think. No, no, it was used it was used right before the long rest in um in Lelizier's elixirs. Yes. So you used it long rest. Since that oh. time a dawn has passed. Okay. So to All right. Speak. All right. I will happily use the stone. Uh 
remember, Hi. don't give any indication that we already have one. I know. So uh, I would, again, friends, ask your aid in making sure I don't... Oh, I'm going to mess this up. So. All right. I would say... Need soul coin. Readily available. Likely to possess. Ease of acquisition. Where, whereabouts... Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, um, pull up stone. Need stole stone. Coin. 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 God. So damn. Coin. Coin. Need coin. Stole coin. Damn. Coin. Damn it, Fulcrum. You're the one who who cemented it in everyone's brain by calling it a soul stone over and over. Don't make me turn this. <laughs> message around you <laughs> how many words do we have we're five down you're, you're five 25 down. we have 25 so we have 20 okay um <laughs> while typhoon is calculating using his uh advanced prodigious <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is actually there is actually a meme out there on the internet that says I love this spell because I love watching PCs count with their yeah. fingers. Oh, <laughs> it's, 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 you see a little a little door open up and a, and a chipmunk leans out of Falkrin's head going. <laughs> <laughs> so five done. <laughs> Trying to find a door. Um, other questions about soul coins? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I've almost got it. <laughs> if Typhon's making it, I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to ask about. I think the most the best, incredible the thing about this about blush this, and uh, shade for a drow. The most incredible thing about the spell is that there's that the recipient gets no saving throw. You could literally send a message to anybody at any point, like somebody's getting ready to do a high dive off the thing, and just all of a sudden, they get this message in there. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that yeah, well, that question was posted in the Twitch chat. Yeah, oh, Sean, well, Mr. Oh. DM, sorry. It was uh, hey, ha ha. What if the guy is fornicating with a demon when the message arrives? Oh, hilarious! Not that Corcoran <laughs> Pebble Moss, expert in writing books about demonology and such things, would do such a thing. So we have twenty more words. All right. I'm sorry, the subscriber you're trying to reach. <laughs> Need coin. Need Emergency. coin. Emergency. Who would possess? Who would possess? Readily available. Readily available. Likelihood of trade or other acquisition. Likelihood of trade or other acquisition. Still hiding in cemetery. Still hiding in Ooh. cemetery. All well. All well. Awesome. I think nice. that's 20 words. <laughs> Instead of all well, we could say <laughs> grievously wounded. <laughs> yeah. And watch who right. intercepts. So you hold the, the um, sending stone and there's a boom as it activates and you speak into it as Typhon whispers in your ear and the message is sent. And after a moment, boom, it vibrates again. Coin, very ubiquitous. Traveling merchant somewhere in Avernus has many, but Easy to find, more or less. Careful. Coin has power, but can be drained. Sounds like it can be done then. And likely lies along our next step. anything in this particular situation is convenient. 
So, do we take any further precautions with the people here? Should we attempt to move them? I find it. I, I, Everything I think, in me says no. I think unless we find something greater to do and save them in a greater context, our hanging around here, prodding about, only causes them more danger. And it sounds like the sooner we get down to the surface, the better it is for everybody. That being said, how do we get down? DM, uh, last time we were sort of when we kind of opened the that door up and kind of stared down into the the raw hell of Avernus mm -hmm. like I eyeball on just how how hundreds far of feet. up we were like hundreds it, of feet. yeah okay yeah Instant like death. that's what I thought yeah yeah it's like uh <laughs> so, so I don't have enough d6s <laughs> 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 I was like you only need four to re-roll your new good one good thing you have a roller <laughs> Right. Now the the it's being pulled down to the surface of mm -hmm. hell by massive chains. That, is that is. correct? Yeah, it's still is. not enough d sixes. Oh my um, god! <laughs> One thousand seven hundred twenty three damage points. Uh, no be a five thousand foot fall or so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's correct, right? Massive, massive chains. Yes, are massive dragging chains are down. dragging it down. Whoa! I just saw that. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of damage. You can't fix that. Nope. That's oh jeez. <laughs> Not even with flex seal. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> so dodge said no saving you dodge the ground. <laughs> <coming out. laughs> what? You go right no. up, right past it. You go right down the second layer of hell. So if I oh, if I use evasion, uh, I can have that, I right? Double check. Minoros, Minoros um, is the third layer of hell, ruled over by Mammon. The fest. He said, "Yeah, fairly ubiquitous." Yeah. He might be mistaken. Figuring, figuring out our next step seems like something best done in the morning. If there is nothing else. Oh. In hell, oh. nothing slow. Yeah. Oh, the fastest. I'm going to bed. And she walks away. <laughs> it's a lot of no. Everybody so sort of slowly out. walks away from you, Jax. I wouldn't let you starve, bed. Jax. Don't worry. We'll figure it out, Jax. Oh, I don't! What's everybody talking about? Oh, we're just trying to figure out what we could eat. Mm, that's a big problem. Mm. And how we could get further down into hell. Yeah, Lulu. Without flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. And everyone finds their bedrolls a little less sure of things than they did earlier in the day. However, after your rest you all are fully healed. You have all received the benefits of your seventh level gain. And as you wake up, you see Ular Ravengard standing, speaking with Feria, speaking with Seldurn, the Jurid, and Einjim, Jalmor. Ah, uh, good. I, uh, I must apologize for not thanking you properly. I owe you my life, and my sole remaining retainer, Locke, here, says that you were instrumental in saving me, and that there was a furious battle, and we all nearly died. I have nothing to offer you at this moment other than my eternal gratitude, but 
should we ever find our ways back to Baldur's Gate. You may ask of me anything, and I will do all that I can, my power as Grand Duke, to make it happen for you. She, she kind of goes up a little closer to him for not a totally private conversation, but just a, a little bit softer and says, could I have my performance restriction lifted? <laughs> Cods, yes. In fact, if we make it out of here, I'll do a cameo. Well, I'll hold you to that. I know this song. It's about uh, sun coming out or something. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds great. No. Just for the casual viewers, somebody's got to explain that one. <laughs> it's true. It, it's so that's that's some from session two or something. Some <laughs> internal jokes are best no, left. I, I, meant, I meant the Raven Guard reference. Oh, the Raven Guard. The yes. performance restriction. Oh, that's the, true. Yes. So Persephone uh, had at one time a very successful comedy song routine uh, that was very inflammatory of the Flaming Fist for their overtly sexist and pigheadish behavior. And uh, she got into a lot of trouble with it. And that is when Rim actually came in and single-handedly saved her from God knows what, but in doing so, wounded and killed several Flaming Fist and had a death sentence over his head. And so Persephone went to her uncle to explain and beg for uh, a pardon, and she got it, but in return, no more performing. That show. Mm. That show, yes. I have been speaking with some of the survivors here. Most are not fighters, however, desperate times. Based on what I've learned and what I know of my personal experience in El Terrell, which I would admit is not extensive, this is the most defensible position. However, we need more fighters. I wish, I wish you could stay, but I think we all know that your business lies elsewhere. How do we get there? That is a very good question. The city is deserted and there are well, it's not deserted I suppose it's full of cowering and very scared civilians but the shops the various places of business they are open at least they were when I went through with my people perhaps you will be able to find something with which you could construct a means I wish it was as simple as finding enough rope, but I'm sure that wouldn't do. I think I can get us down. Really? Well, excellent. How many of us will there be, then? Just the six of us. Oh, I would Seven say... with Rhea. Yeah. Um, before you all go, I wonder if I could impose upon you for one last quest. Speak. So that we have time, but let's have hear. you encountered any other fighters or groups of survivors which may contain fighters? Yes. It was only the one group of refugees, but I don't think they were fighters. They were coward. One. There was only one caretaker. She was a dwarf. Well, even one person would help. Plus, yeah. how many you say? I believe she said she had at least fifty refugees with her. I think starving out of food. Well, they should come here. In fact, with more people, perhaps we could put together parties of people to begin searching the. Mm -hmm. streets of Eltharel to find other pockets of survivors and perhaps more warriors but this will be where we stand 
Rhea. Hmm. You, you could stay here and help the Duke defend Eltaro. I have thought of that. In fact, I was going to speak with him. But I suppose now we'll, we'll do. I, I don't I don't want to leave you all. I I think what you're doing is very important and I I can't imagine a, a more noble quest to be on, but these people this is where I belong, I think. I'm sorry if No, no need no, no need no do not apologize. Each of us has a task before us. I think yours, rightfully, is the defense of El Torel. Uh, Typhon, I, I imagine, well, I almost say task, what, what is your method of getting us down to the surface? And would it accommodate all of us? Part of my efforts last night were co was copying a interesting spell that I found. I can cause one of us to fly, at least, and, well, the other five, well, as soon as I see you falling, I can slow your descent with magic. Would, what if I have Jax in my pack? Would that require you only to have? Do not know what the extra weight, what effect it would have on the fall or on the spell. I see. Like something we should test out. But am I am I doing math wrong here? Is there is, is Rhea? Do we feel like Rhea's staying, or are we? It sounds to you like she might be staying. However, the Duke has asked you for one last task. Yes. Right. But this is to get down off of. Yes. To yeah. get down. Yeah. If when, when you when you leave El Torel, it seems as if Rhea will be staying behind. And as she's mentioning this, uh, Locke comes up and he's got a, a plate full of rolls um some rolled up uh looks like some sort of cheese um he uh <laughs> he looks down and says i i made this all for you i i'm i'm with the duke i i wish i could thank you in a more permanent manner but this is the last of my food it should be enough to at least get you through a couple of days and, and with the help of Seldern and, and myself I think we will be able to um, keep people fed at least as long as we're able to keep making scavenging raids into the city no 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 the rolled cheese is very stale and dry however it seems to have been treated in such a way that it will actually keep for a little while Yeah. No, I, I think uh, your bag of holding is more likely to be your stomach. So uh, we'll just put but that I, somewhere I, else. I apologize for my for my behavior the other day. I I, I was uh, yes, and I am better today. Easy. Don't be catty about it, Jax. Hey. Don't mind Jax, he's only kitten. You were perfect. <laughs> Walks away in a huff. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Mas Master Beauregard. Him, so. Master him, Beauregard. So. Master Beauregard. <laughs> Thank you. You saved our lives. And while I'm sure you did not feel it, you were very brave. Always looking to help out people in need. I dare say Master Beauregard saved your life better than I did, Fulcran. <sighs> seems At least to, more wisely. It seems to me my my friends make a habit of bringing me back from the dead, to which I am grateful for. Aren't you the priestess here? At any rate, I hope that uh, we all see Clerically you. speaking. Agreed. Um... I will, of course, be staying here with the Duke now that of he course. only has me. I'll have to do all the work, but happy to do it. 
I have no doubt you will succeed mightily in that task. Hmm. Oh, here, have a biscuit. And he gives you a, a, a Bardic Inspiration biscuit. <sighs> For no. the next 10 minutes, you can use no, it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Stop it. <laughs> Think of something quick. Let's go on something. that side quest right now. Yeah, right? So, yes. side quest. <laughs> All right. Go right ahead. As everybody's gathering up their stuff to go. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It sounds like everyone's done. It's Jax, right? Hmm. Well, I have to admit this is the first time in my entire life that I believe I have ever owed a favor to a goblin, but a promise is a promise. What favor would you have of the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate. Anything within my power? Yes. I swear to you, Jax the Goblin, Imslayer, should we survive and find ourselves on a happier day within Baldur's Gate, as long as no other family comes forward to claim her, she will be welcome in my home, and I will raise her as my own. Of course. Is there anything else? No. Do you? If you find any in the city, be sure to bring it. Good luck to you, Jax the Inslayer. So, gathering your things to go in search of Grenda the Dwarf and the other survivors. As you recall, she said that they were in the northwestern corner of El Terrell. In a theater. In a theater. As you exit. We, we marked the spot and I made, kept it on the map. Mm -hmm. Did mark it with an X? The swan. No. Yeah, the swan. Oh. What did you mark it with? I marked it with the swan on my map because I'm oh. a cartographer. A cartographer. Um, so as you leave, the Grand Chapel, or the Grand Cathedral of El Terrell, once again, the sounds of battle coming up from below and from elsewhere in the city are... Uh, are all around you. Um, it's difficult to conceive of someplace being more dangerous than where you are right now. However, you know that this is probably your eventual destination. By what route would you like to go to the swan? The safest one. The unoccupied one, <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. Are we are we in the Grand Cemetery currently? You were in or the, are the we high characters. Hall. No, we're at the high. We're hall. in the high hall. Yeah. Okay. So from the high hall, we had traveled from the Swan, 
You, you've never been to the Swan. You went to Lely's Years Close Elixirs. Okay. Yeah. You've been to Lely's Years Elixirs, and you've been to the Grand Cemetery. And you encountered Grenda the Dwarf about here. Perhaps we take the same way we took to Elixirs Elixirs until we have to go somewhere new. Fine by me. Islin, Islin led us last time. Did uh, she? He's. Yeah. It, oh, okay. Jack. To to Lely's ears elixirs, you led them. Yes. You do, you do yes. not know where the swan is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rhea, than the, the map. Rhea, you said you recalled the location of the theater. Yes. Uh, well, yeah, I, I think I've been there. Um, the northwestern was, corner of the city. Was there a, a better? Way to go. Should we take some of the looks like there's a, a well, main road the, looking at the grand power, the grand promenade, and she points, uh, going almost due north from the um, from the uh, high hall, or we could mm. go the way we went before. That seems awful exposed if we go down the grand promenade. Those are the options. I think the way we went before, yeah, great. Oh, good. We have to go by the orphanage again. Let's not speak about that. As you move through the battle-torn streets of El Torel, you you cannot shake a feeling of creeping dread that you are being watched. Um, who is leaving? I can lead us up to Lele's ears, and then from there, I, Le- Rhea is coming with us for this. Yes, she is. Okay, she is. She has her long sword um, at her side, but then strapped across her back is this massive um, great sword of the unknown hero. Okay, then. Who's leading? Uh, I will lead for the All first right. half. Um, so make a... Hmm. It's not necessarily a survival check. You know where you're going. It's more about perception. Oh, so God, I'm ma- terrible at both of them. <laughs> you should lead then in that case. Yeah. Apparently we have some bits to do with. Oh! Uh, during the heartfelt... Uh, protection of Shora. Manxworks had dropped 20 before, oh, before that started. Oh, that's nice. Oh. We're 20 bits off. Well, thank you all the same. Yes. Oh my gosh. For not you get your name on screen. For not buying these people another healing potion. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, people doing it. DM over there like they can't use their potions if they're dead. That's right. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, perception, please. Yes. 17. Very well. So, as you are walking, you, you come to Lady's Ears of Lixers, and occasionally you hear, you know, the sounds of monstrous creatures, and occasionally you hear the <laughs> wings of something flying overhead, and you all duck into. Um, our alcoves or alleyways hiding. But with a 17 plus your passive perception, you are able to uh, avoid many obstacles. Um, there are several parties of uh, devils out searching for survivors, um, specific missions of their own, hard to know what. You do see quite a few demons in town, mostly uh, the closet, the things that you encountered the bottom of Lady's ears of rituals. But uh, occasionally a dretch or two being led by uh, other larger monstrous animalistic creatures that do not resemble the humanoid basic forms of the devils that you've mostly encountered down here. These these seem to be on a different have a different um, a different uh, cosmology. However, as you're walking, there's a, another deep rumbling 
Did you realize that this isn't the uh, the tremors caused by the city's laborious fall? This is this is something else. This is something moving, coming closer underneath the street. <laughs> and it comes, feels like it passes right underneath you. Then it fades and is gone. Um, as you're walking, there's a roar as uh, a couple of blocks away from you. It looks like an entire neighborhood just <laughs> sinks into some sort of uh, under under underdug area as this thing has moved through and just is bringing bits and pieces of the city down with it. And as it comes down, crashing down, there's a huge plume of dust and smoke that just <laughs> comes over all of you. Um, an entire neighborhood just reduced to rubble and you hack and gag as the air becomes barely breathable and you stumble forward and the tremors fade and stop. And there is silence, save for the sounds of battle in the distance. A few stones of rubble fall from a rooftop, and the sound is, is dry, muffled, the air is thick, and as the stones fall, they... And because of your high passive perception, Jax, you can feel that there is something coming right underneath your feet. You have just enough time to warn everybody. All right. Uh, I believe you A should be able to change it. Have you? Can you see this map? Yes, sir. All right. Please put yourselves on the map somewhere on there. Hell yeah! Keep picking that again. Oh, okay. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'm going to find some different music for this, I think. Yeah, yeah. I want to shoot. Mm. Stop. All right. <laughs> All right. We will roll initiative. That's not what I wanted to press. There we go. I stand for the fighters. Let's see here. Right. You wouldn't mind dragging me and then putting you have a chance? And uh, not okay. at all. I don't know that every uh, the the uh, it's not updated for the D and D Beyond sheets. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh -oh. I'm looking that some people look wounded, including myself. Oh yes, make sure that your uh, your characters are up to mine, date. Yeah, mine doesn't we can't update, update anymore for some reason. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. I cannot imagine what I have done that has caused that to be the case. Um, no, we'll yeah, fix could, it later. We'll just ignore it for now. Um, I can check one, out. The one red thing. one is changeable. Red and blue are changeable? Just the green one isn't. Yeah. I can't change anything on mine. I could change all of mine, so... Oh, that's so weird. Let's see here. It's a thing that I've never figured out in Roll20, and I just gave up. <laughs> That's uh, all that, about the micro that settings anything, and um, yeah. type on where What's the that? tokens are being dragged anything? from. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, now I can change it. Oh, uh, all right. Oh. Okay. I have figured out how to fix it. I will fix it later. Okay. Um, we are at the top of the initiative. Oh my! Really? Yeah. So you see, you guys all having amazing initiative scores. All right. Yeah. So is that? All that happens is it's like something's under us, and then it's initiative rolled. Is... Yes. Uh, okay. Um, Jax is able to tell that um, despite the fact that something has big has gone past you and has apparently disappeared, that there's something coming up from the ground um, at speed, and he's able to shout out a warning. And as a result, no one is surprised when from the ground burst three. Uh, excuse me. More than three. Oh, 
six large uh, worms that just crush <laughs> their way through the street and come up. They have strange, soulful-looking eyes with long eyelashes, something sad and innocent about their eyes, but then they lift and a huge sphincter-like mouth extends with sharp, thorny teeth all around it as they <laughs> come up around you, almost as if they were trying to surround and catch you all in a space so that they could engulf you, but they have not. Let's see. They have not yet, I should say. They, they used first. all their movement and their dash. They have no more actions left. <laughs> Wouldn't call. that be? Wouldn't that be boring? <laughs> all right, Falcon. One of them attacks you, hitting Yay. AC fifteen. Uh, the other one that. moves to and attacks you there, hitting AC nine. One okay, comes so far. towards Jax, attacks him. No. <laughs> Hitting AC 23. No. Uh, Jax, I'm going to need a dexterity save from you. All right. You are fine on the dexterity save. This creature, as it comes up, it does a sort of a, a uh, uh, undulation and comes and tries to completely engulf you. You take nine points of piercing and six points of acid damage as it comes down and scrapes by you in bits and pieces of it. Yes, it's a it's an attack. If you can't use evasion, you can use uncanny dodge. So the total damage would be between 15, so you take seven points of damage. And let's see. This one moves and attacks Silas. This one comes to attack Typhon. And this one attacks Islin. So, the one on Silas. Hitting AC 24. That's a um, hit. Dexterity saving throw, please, Silas. I can do that. Rolling a 14 total. 14. You are fine. You take twelve point, uh, 8 points of piercing and 4 points of acid damage. Eight one. points and four points? Eight and four, yes. Twelve, okay. Massive. One attacks Typhon. The bite hitting AC 14. Oh, miss. Miss. And one attacks Islin hitting AC 21. That's uh, going to hit. Dexterity saving throw. All right. I clicked it. There we go. There it is. Twelve. I take, a, uh, oh, oh. take 11 points of piercing. Three points of acid damage. I before uh, Sean, I, mm -hmm. I uh, with my recent level up, I took the lucky feat. Aha! So I am going to re-roll this dexterity save. Very well. You have rolled a sixteen. You are not swallowed by the worm. You take the Woo! eleven points of piercing and the three points of acid. Is that a reaction that you use to in order uh, to roll lucky? Uh, I, that's a good question. This is my first time playing with it. I think I, I just, think I, I don't think it is, it's a, re yeah. So that would mean your reaction is still available for using uncanny dodge if you wish. Oh, I've never used that before. Okay. Yeah, that's why I mentioned it. This is a, uh, uh, not used to playing rogue. So you are no. able, to, so okay, you're able yeah. to use uncanny dodge to have the damage that was done. So instead of 14 points of damage, you take seven, but that is your reaction. Great. I believe that is all six of them. Which will bring, bring us to Eastland. Okay, um, so reaction, but bonus action I can disengage. Is that right? Correct. All right, so I'm going to do that. And I am going to uh, three, four, five, step back behind here. And uh, I will shoot the worm uh, that is closest to me. Mr. Red? Uh, I see no colors. Yes, Mr. Red. Oh, yeah. Uh, 23 to hit. 23 is a hit. Um, and it's not engaged with anything else, so I think it's just 11 points. It's engaged with the imp? Oh. Sure, it's engaged with the imp. The imp's <laughs> not invisible? It is, but does that is that 
Not a. There's no way part? that there's no way that Yuslin would know that it is engaged. Okay. Therefore, she cannot take advantage of the fact that it's engaged. Yeah. Also, that Persephone is take is a large creature right now. Oh right. There we go. <laughs> That's okay. Eleven. Let's take Eleven. Eleven. Um, okay. Eleven points of damage. Thank you. Yes. Very good. Alrighty. That will bring us to Falkrun. Falkrun just, like, the rumble goes off. She's like, oh, nine hells. And then she's going to go ahead and use her uh, bonus action to summon Steve. Steve! Steve! Uh, he rolls in with a 15, and this is going to be on purple. 15 on purple. 15 is a... Is... Is can't be right. Yes, 15 is a hit. Oh, fuck. I was like, is a what? Is a what, DM? 15's a hit, yes. All right, so, lovely. Awesome. And then uh, she'll follow that up with uh, her own her own magic of, uh, of hitting with Quietus. All right. So, Quietus sings with a 24 to hit. That's a hit. So, that'll do some. Now, I imagine these creatures are not undead. They're not. Yeah, I so said that would... However, as Steve hits one, black Icarus blood comes coming out and sh Oh gross. It's demonic. Oh yeah. Ah. Like oh. That. So and damage for Quietus was nine. Uh, nine points of damage. Magical slashy. Very good. So. Anything else from you, Falcon? Uh yeah, well, no, because if I – so, Sean, uh, so Dan, if I try to move away from – basically, I'm pinned between two of these things. You if are. I try if to, you try to move, you will take a – I'll get – yeah, two, it'll be a – Two attacks of opportunity. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I'm actually going to try to – oh, I'm sorry. I, should, I didn't put Steve on the board. Uh, I'm going to move – I'm going to position myself to the opposite side of purple so that I'm not pinned between purple and pink. I know Pink will get a, an attack of opportunity against me for that, you but will. that's what I'm doing, Dan. Okay. So uh, Pink makes an attack of opportunity. Yeah, I did, uh, Steve what? did nine uh, nine damage. Yeah. What path did through. you take? What's that? What path yeah. uh, did you? Take? How did you? The path I went up and around to the north, so that I did not bring myself in range of orange. So you went around like that. Okay. Oh. Well, yeah. So, but I would technically be here as I am a dwarf and can't run around like I'm like like, a, like I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. All right, and that's me. All right, we need uh, a window it, for Falkern to hang out of. Yeah, it reaches yeah, out right. with a tail. It reaches out with a tail stinger to try and sting you as you go by, hitting AC seven. It misses completely. Um, ha -ha! We all. Why do I have the turn all? Order. Yeah. What? What happened apparently to that? Apparently, purple wormling is just taken over. Um, <laughs> that is quite annoying that that just happened. And everybody will, will quickly redo the um, the turn order. Yeah, yeah. Is this still the right why that happened? Um, order? No, it is not completely completely wrong. So I'm going to clear it, and I remember that the worm was first. So I'm going to give it a. Uh, it was first with a 16, 16 then a 15. Yeah. 16. 8, then a 15. Yeah. So the next was um, Islin. Me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was Islin. Uh, so we'll just say, I don't remember exactly what the Team number was. Um, so Worm, 16. <laughs> Islin. I was 15. 15. And then... Do you want us to re-roll and edit? Uh, yeah, re-roll and edit. That's a good idea. Thank you. You got um, it. Mm -hmm. Oh, got Eastlin already. Oh, that's so oh. much better. I know, right? All of us did better. Nope. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, when Sean was like, I'm so used to guys rolling better, I'm like, I rolled a 15. Mm -hmm. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened with my. Um... We need Eastlin to be clicked. Yep. Token click and then edit. Yeah. Uh, I cannot edit it. There it goes. All right, I think that's everybody now. Hey, we're 
back to normal with these. Yeah, he's in, did it. So Persephone was next. There you go. Woo. I uh, take out my sword uh, and say, "Are you ready for another day of adventuring?" Oh, ugh, why? What is happening? Oh my God! <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> so she attacks with uh, her rapier. That on go? pink? Uh, yes, sorry, on pink. All right, this is the one that, that's Falkrin hit, right? Yes, with a 15. 15's a hit? Uh, no, I think no, you, he I, hit I, purple. I attacked yeah. purple, yeah. Thank you. Um, so that's six magical damage. Mm -hmm. And then with my trusty old dagger. Uh, I don't know why it rolled twice. So the first one was an 11 to hit. 11 does not hit. All right. Um, and then I so, say, yeah. nicely done. Indeed. To the uh, yes, you as well. Uh, that will bring us to Jax. Mm hmm. Twenty six is a hit. Twenty-seven damage. Goodness. It roars in rage. He is, but there's so much rubble and destruction that it is, it's available to move without any... There we go. Okay. Um, there is cover. One morning. Moment. Let me just do that. Alrighty. Persephone, Jax. That will bring us to Typhon. Oh, goody. What a lovely situation this is. I will um, <laughs> have my friend fly over here, do some um, distracting movements, and then I will cast uh, my shocking grasp upon Blue. For blue, or blue, uh, with a twenty-six, I guess, to hit. Kind of. That is a hit. And um, we'll on do. Blue, you say? On blue. Okay. Sixteen points of shocking damage. Sixteen points. That's blue done to you. <laughs> As you did it, it <laughs> thrashes in the air. Its tail <laughs> splashing on the um, on the ground. Is it sort of a? As it screams in a weirdly childlike fashion, I'm gonna weird. All right, We've so got blue orphan snakes here. So blue, blue did not get a reaction, but I believe red did. I wasn't engaged unless Word. he has reach. I wasn't engaged with him. Uh, he does not. Okay. Um, my imp's just gonna go sit in the fire. All right chill there. So. Do -do -do -do. Silas, it is your turn. I'm going to attack with my glaive. Blue, uh, sorry, green, bright green, just below me. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I get any bonus for his engagement in any direction, but I doubt that it will matter with a nine to hit. Nine does not hit. Anything else from you, Silas? Uh, no, that's it for now. All right, that will bring us back to the top of the order with the worms... Um, and Eastling, you will be next. So, one worm attacks Fulcran. Come on. There we go. Uh, it reaches out with its bite and tries to engulf you again. 17 on the die it roll. It's a miss. It's a miss as the worm tries to find purchase on your armor, and it, you hear a 
as the thorns make a nice scratch across the steel. However, you have not been harmed. Uh, one of them attacks Persephone. With a bite, hitting AC 20. Uh, one second. Um, yes, that hits. Are you forgetting something? Yeah, but it won't be enough. Oh, will it not? Well, it so will sorry. Not, but thank you for <laughs> right, being uh, willing. I'm going to make a, a need a dexterity save from you, Persephone. Uh, ooh, good ooh, 20, 20. Dirty 20. Nine pier- points of piercing and five points of acid damage, which you are not engulfed. We need to uh, get you to this, you know, hinted at infernal merchant and buy you some armor. Sword bard armor. Uh, yes, uh, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Sean, say it one more time. Nine and what? Uh, 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 nine points of piercing and five points of acid. Thank you. This worm uh, slithers over to attack Eastland. Hitting AC nine. Blue slithers to attack Jax. It saw you somehow. Um, with a critical. <gasps> so I need a dexterity saving throw. Sorry, he did not roll all that well on the damage. That greater healing potion is going to come in. Dexterity oh. save of 10. Oh. Jax. Okay. Take 11 points of piercing damage and two points of acid damage. However, you are engulfed as this creature just (laughs) gobbles you up and you are now inside of it. You are (laughs) blinded and restrained. Which one's the Something about a dodge, what? Uncanny dodge would, would have the damage but not this effect. It's a dexterity can, saving throw. Can I There's gift no, him my bardic inspiration? No, bardic inspiration cannot be gifted. Ah, oh, that's right. In hell, <laughs> worms eat you, Michael. So, I mean, un- uncanny dodge would definitely work with a dexterity save against a spell like fireball or lightning bolt or something like that. But this is this is not. This is you fail this and it it engulfs you. Yeah, right. Damage reduction. So. Do you uh, uncanny dodge the damage from the actual attack? Okay. So you, instead of taking 11 points of piercing and two points of acid, you take five points of piercing and one point of acid. But you are engulfed. You are blinded and restrained. So if you, let's see, I will give you a couple of little icons to help us remember that. That means restrained. And that means blinded. And we're going to go ahead inside and, it. And we, yeah, we're going to have to go ahead and do that. Um, so, Eason, we have one, we have two more, sorry. The one attacking, being attacked by Silas attacks him back, hitting AC 18. That is a meat to beat 18. All right, I need a dexterity saving throw from you, Silas. Twenty is 20. no problem. Eight points of piercing, five points of acid. Orange here attacks Titan. Uh, hitting AC twenty. Uh, I will use my reaction to cast shield. Shield goes up as this thing arcs in the air, comes down on top of you, and it it tries to crunch down, but it cannot <laughs> penetrate the magical armor and you are standing there holding this thing as this thing is completely around you just as the thorny teeth are trying to grind against this invisible force anything else anything else John? no no I'm it's your turn (laughs) we're fine we're good whatever Um, I'm going to go through the order again because I got confused Islet it is your turn I may need more maps Sean um is this the extent? To, can this I, is can the I... extent of the okay. map. You're off the map. Here there I... be dragons. Okay. Uh, can I move? Can I disengage me, and move uh, around? Yeah. Let me. I, I will. Sure. That's where I was. So what we got is. <laughs> I can't either. That's fine. I can move as long as I can move around. I'll stay. We'll... There are windows and such in this. Um, in this. Uh, house-like thing, if you wish oh. to move in, jump yeah, into it. 
I will do that. Um, I will Windows, just... you say? Mm. Um, and uh, let I me will... know if you need to know where some are. Uh, I do. I'll draw them. So there's uh, one, and we're gonna put one here as well. I'm not seeing it, Sean. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Nope. Oh, I, there's that guy. But there's none on this side of the house. Uh, yes, there are. Oh, okay. Uh, so I will um, move. I will disengage and move in there. I will uh, take a quick shot with my uh, with my short bow. All right. Uh, Twelve. Twelve is, I believe, a hit. Oh, yep. all right. We'll go with that. Uh, seven. Seven, and this is on red? This is on red. Is designated T. Seven points of piercing. And uh, I will uh, withdraw within the house. Mm -hmm. uh, I will move up to this window, and I will mm -hmm. hide inside the house. Uh, well, no, I cannot. You I can't lied. bonus action hide because your bonus action disengaged. So never mind. So sorry. Uh, as you come into this house, it's just uh, pieces of uh, furniture have fallen from the, tr the uh, tremors. Bits and pieces of the a roof have fallen in, and there, there's smoldering fire around you. Oh, lovely. I believe it is visible. Can you see it? I can. Okay. Um, anything else, then? No, I'm just staring All right, there. Falkron. You are muted, Falkron. Unmute myself. <laughs> Cone of silence removed. Um, so, uh, did I has did, did I see Jax get eaten by blue? I feel like with my seventeen, I would. Pursue, yes, like, and, and I'm sure he made a little bit of noise when it happened as well. You're all right. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna have Steve uh, attack purple again. Okay. So let me roll. Where, where's my brain? Uh, ah, okay. So, Steve rolls, and nice. twenty-two. 22 is a hit. Lovely. Let me go ahead and get that sweet spiritual that god damage coming at you. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> okay, so six force damage hitting purple. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cast uh, uh, Toll the Dead. Okay. On uh, the on blue, the on um, blue, okay. The one that swallowed Jax to try That's to. It's a wisdom play. save coming up. I have rolled a. I have rolled a fourteen. Fourteen is not enough. Oh, oh. Yay! So, uh, and then is it damaged in any way, DM or? Uh, yes, you did. So you need to. Oh, damn. Lovely. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm sorry. Has it? Did it take damage previously? Oh, it has taken damage. Yes. Okay, good. That's right. That's that's oh, that's what I needed to know. All right, so Ooh. twenty-one necrotic damage. Wow. <laughs> Burn. So, as you are going down the gullet of this thing, Jax, and you're like, oh, it's getting very dark, there's all of a sudden this sh a shivering and a shuddering as this uh, worm begins to thrash around. And you are, you are expelled onto yes! the ground in front of it. You are prone, but you are not blind and you are not restrained. And then from across the battlefield, you hear, Don't eat my goblin! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the end of, of Falcon's turn. Good turn, Falcon. Anything else? All right, on to That'll Persephone. Be it for me. All right. Uh, swinging with that rapier of the swashbuckler again. A 25 to 25 hit. 25 is a with hit. With a massive six points of damage. This is on pink? On per pink still, yeah. On pink still, okay. Uh, still gonna do my dagger. Uh, did it roll? Yeah. 13 to hit. 13 is a hit. Four non-magical damage. So, and it's, well, let's see. Six and 13. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again because last time for some reason I didn't roll my second attack like a big mm. smart. 13, 13's a hit. 11 magical damage. That is a lot of damage. It is. I and say, oh, good job. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Awesome. Mm. As it does, black blood begins to pour out of it from the puncture wounds. I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, God. You're fine. 11. You're all right. Okay. As the blood gushes out of it, you you jump out of the way just as it splashes in front of you. You have not been in contact with the blood. Okay. Anything else, Persephone? I get the sense that the blood is dangerous then. Yes. Uh, You have been told that it is. Uh, Great. So I just call out, remember the blood is dangerous, and then I'm going to use my bonus action still with my dagger on purple. Uh, Do you get two bonus actions around? Oh, do I not? I think you only get two attacks and one bonus action. Got it. Never mind. Then it wouldn't hit anyway, so that's fine. All right. Persephone's done. Jax, you are prone. Okay. The worm provides plenty of cover. <laughs> Another one on stealth. Unbelievable. Something um, is wrong. It's this. Something, well, no, something has to balance out the, the 39-year-old earlier. Um, <laughs> they have tremor sense, Jax. Anything else? All right, so he knows you're coming. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a hit. And you come rushing by it, and your blade snakes out and just guts it as you go rolling past, and black Iker just <laughs> comes all over the street. Please make a dexterity saving throw. You didn't roll a one. Ten is all right. Doing okay with a ten. The blood comes gushing out, and you just roll out of the way. You are fine. That will bring us to Typhon. Is the is Green dead? Green is dead. Okay. Um. Spending a lot of. I don't want to expend too many resources, but this seems valid. I will go over here and um, sort of do the old signature um, uh, lightning bolt saying, Akrapi! And then have that arc forward. All right. Dex saves. We need some dex saves. We got a 15 and a 15. Two 15s. Two successes. Two successes. So purple has already taken some damage, I believe. Where's no, purple? purple has not taken any damage. From Steve? Yeah, purple took, took damage, damage from, from Steve. Yep, sorry. And and Falkron. And Falkron, got it. So 13 is uh, going to be the number. 13 is the number, so okay. <laughs> Okay. Anything else, Typhon? Nope. The lightning or I'll have just... my imp go do this. Okay. The, it, use a help action on this one. Okay. Next melee attack against red has advantage. Or next attack. And it's any attack, right? Yeah. Next, next attack on red has advantage. Um, so a lightning bolt streaks out of, uh, of uh, Typhon's hands and just... And it, um, envelops both of the worms and crashes into the house behind them. Uh, Falkrin, you have to shi- uh, um, shield your eyes from the brightness of the power. Anything else, Typhon? Mm-mm, I'm good. Silas. Going to step forward uh, to there mm-hmm. and using my reach on purple. Uh, go for the glaive attack. On purple, you say? Yes, purple. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Purple is the one next to Falkrin. Yep. Yes. Uh, 22 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, doing seven points of damage. Mm-hmm. And how 
wounded as purple look at this point. Very, very wounded. Okay, then I'll just stop there. And actually complete my movement to step in front of Persephone, and that's it. All right. You whip your uh, glaive up in the air, and you create a long black streak along the uh, the very segmented parts of this worm. And as you do, you kind of feel a as you bring up, and it moves over the ridges of its body. That will bring us to the worm. One worm attacks Silas. This one that was attacking Bogdan attacks Silas with a hitting eight. Um, the orange one attacks Typhon with a critical miss. The red one dives into the house, burrowing through the wall as if it isn't even there. Just <laughs> and you see uh, the floorboards and the table and bits and pieces that are just being <sighs> just being chewed up as this thing just moves towards you. Uh, Island stops there and it attacks you. We're hitting AC twenty one. I need a dexterity saving throw. All right. With a success, you take six points of piercing and one point of acid damage. All right. That is all of the worms. That brings back to the top of the round. Well, that was the top of the round, so Eastland, you're next. Uh, how bad does red look? Red does not look to have been damaged at all. What? I hit it multiple times. Did you hit it? Let me I double did. Check. At least once. Don't, don't, yes, don't, I hit it don't, once. Don't, don't, don't. So you got it. Yes, you did. Okay. okay. Uh, it doesn't look that damaged. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, I'm going to uh, disengage. Uh, okay. Bonus action disengage and hop out of the window. Um, two, three, four, five. Uh, and I will take a shot to finish off purple. Very well. I'm afraid oh, that is, is not a hit. It's engaged, so I get advantage. No, you don't get no. advantage. You exactly. just would get sneak attack if you hit. But a 10 does not hit. Balls. Okay. How, uh, how close does that come to Persephone's head? She has, <laughs> she has good aim. <laughs> yes, she does. Uh, that will be the end of my turn. Uh, Falkron. Muted. It's my favorite kind of falcon. Oh. Harsh. It's a joke. How, to how give dare you? Time you. To push uh, the how button. dare you, Silas? How dare oh. you? All right. So, uh, Steve is going to go ahead and take a swing at purple. Let's see if Steve can do his job. All right. Um, actually, Steve's been doing fantastic today, I must say. So, with a <laughs> 10? Let's you see. You were saying. Yeah. Let me let me go ahead. Uh, so can I use my bardic inspiration on Steve? Does that sure. count? Yeah, yeah. He's he's a part. Oh, no, don't do keep. Oh, it I'm sounds it. it sounds about like a, a dwarf priestess to sing to her sword or to sing to her magic. However, hammer. Th this is, wait, is this the bardic oh. inspiration that you were given by um, the by, biscuit? Uh, the yeah. biscuit? Yeah. It's a ten minutes has passed. Oh. oh. It took you more than ten minutes to reach this area. It was a six, too. It was a six. Fine. Sorry. Then. No, it's all right. It's all right. You took out the stale biscuit. No. It, <laughs> and it just, uh, just crumbled and went. <sighs> it was like it was, it was literally <laughs> ten minutes away from being completely inedible. It was the very last ten minutes of its shelf life. Um, anything oh. else, Falcon? Yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this thing because now All it's right. just making me mad. All right. So pull out Quietus. Well, actually, quiet, and then but 19 hit. to hit, well, and you slice it right down the center of its body. <laughs> Black bile just <laughs> falls out on you, along with intestines and other things. Please roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, correct. correct. Well, ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Rolling that. Oh, oh dear. I, I no, hang on. I'm going to do advantage. Uh, inspiration. Oh, dear God. <laughs> so you need to tell me before you make the Before I roll. Okay, then, then you know what? Then you know what? No, no. No, I haven't. Yeah, I sure could if I did. But um, yeah, nope. So fine. Then my roll I need you five. to make a constitution DM. saving throw, please. Oh, well, okay, no. Uh, I feel confident in that. 
confident. Ah, uh, ten? To the con? Makes I don't me... think so. Let me double check. No, I can't. Didn't, didn't you hear Typhon cursing you as it went? Confident. <laughs> Doing well so far. It's, it's, it's affecting the algorithms and the AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm just seeing <laughs> myself it's, like slicing it's, this it's, thing. What is it? Like, AMSR for robots. That's Peter. <laughs> we're, gonna ASMR, do, yeah. we're going to save this for later, but as the blood falls on you, you, ah, ah, you begin to try and wipe it off. You do as best you can, but. As you watch, you see some of it seep into your skin and out of sight. <gasps> oh no. Anything else there, Falkron? No. Full right <laughs> for 70. It is your turn. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to move over to orange and mm -hmm. hit it with my rapier. Indeed. Why sometimes when I click it, it goes, it's not. 17 to hit with 11 magical piercing. Yeah, 17 is a hit. And uh, my bonus action with my dagger is 25 to hit. That nice. random dagger uh, with seven non magical. Is he still up? Uh, this was on the, well, the last one that's there. Yeah, that in front of you. He falls. So hold on. Oops. Again, uh, black blood spills out. It shoots out of the puncture wound that you've made, like under pressure, just <laughs> spraying right at you. Make a dexterity saving throw. Falkron, you are okay. Ten is enough. Oh so, my gosh. That was close. Dexterity save. You are good. Um, and then I'm going to take my second attack to use my crossbow because I can't get to the red one uh, to hit red. So is this a hand crossbow? Light. Yeah. Light crossbow. I don't know that you can... Get it out. So, you, so you've so you stabbed with your rapier, you've stabbed with your dagger, and you drop both weapons, and you pull out your light crossbow. That is I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Hey, uh, what are you? Do, 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 do. Uh, I'll be right back. Um, <laughs> 13, 13 to, hit. to hit. Six non magical. Six non magical. Alrighty. It is still up, but it is not looking well. That's me. Alright. That will bring us to Jax. Yep. And I believe, yeah. So that was uh, that was an advantage, I believe. Um, oh, unless... that's right. I never took the never took advantage. Okay, well, so we'll say that the advantage continued. So critfish Persephone on that um, on that light crossbow. <laughs> All right, so you're good with the thirteen. All right, Jax, it's your turn. The imp is invisible. Oh, wait, we said that the imp was... He's distracting with auto audio. He's not actually... All right. Yeah. It's complicated. All right. You can't see the imp, but it's not going to affect anything for you, Jack. Oh, but it was for engaged. Yeah, I'm going to say that using the help action does not count as being engaged with the enemy. However, who cares? Because a critical is just rolled. Not a one. What do you know? The bolt goes streaking through the uh, worm and it falls dead. Hmm. Um, and nobody is within range to worry about. I suppose the imp is. Imp, have the imp roll uh, dexterity saving throw. Does Washes it, his face in it. Is he affected by it as a um, fiendish form? Question. Uh, 
beans automatically succeed. That is the end of combat. Oh. Wow. Win. It was a one, and then a two, and then a three. It was almost a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna... finished. You all stand around panting as the puddles of black bile sort of steam and create an acrid smoke that hangs like a pall in the air. Um, Falkrin, you you were rubbing your hand and you you could feel the blood underneath your skin trying to react with your own, but you close your eyes, you concentrate, and you feel it dissipating. There's a slight itching sensation which fades. You are fine. Uh, are, you, are you all right? Is everyone all right? I think you need to clean yourself off, uh, Falcon. Yeah, I... That substance is unnatural. Is it worth having? Well, let's keep going, yes? Hope that doesn't happen again. Typhon, is that blood worth having for any reason? I can't think of a reason at the moment. I know it. I've seen what it did to Eastland's body. I think it just... Well, could I actually do an Arcana check on it? Sure. What I've seen right now just seems like sort of chaos, but... Um... Let's see. 25. 25. Um, yes, Demonic Iker does have uh, a corrupting effect on flesh. Um, it tends to dissipate very quickly when in uh, exposed to air on a plane other than the abyss. Um, however, it can be bottled, um, sold to people who need it for various uh, alchemical ingredients. It can be rubbed on um, weapons. Well, then maybe I'll bottle some quick. All right, make a skill check with your um, poisoner's kit. Uh, can it be alchemist? Sure. It's the same. It's the same modifier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't really. It's not a good option to roll this, so I'll use. Investigation. Natural one. A natural oh. one. <laughs> mm. You are unable, as you sit and watch this blood beginning to dissipate into this vapor, you realize that you just didn't move fast enough. And you are unable to capture the ice core. That's too bad. There will undoubtedly be others, Typhon. Well, let's make sure of it. But for now, I think we should continue. Quickly. Indeed. Righty. Um, let me think for a moment. So many DMs trying to backseat me. Um, <laughs> the uh, you continue along your way. Moving through the city of El Torel. And eventually you come to a large edifice that is somewhat up on um, a little bit of an embankment, um, not nearly as high as the central part of the city. Uh, which is much higher than the rest on a large uh, bluff overlooking everything. Even from here, you can see the remnants of the high hall. Again, the bits and pieces of it floating in the air as the slow motion fall of the city continues. However, on the bluff which you are now approaching, you see a dark brown, somewhat circular structure with a thatched roof um, and on a uh, somewhat broken and tattered sign uh, lying on the ground face up a beautiful picture of a swan is painted 
There is a large uh, barn door which is closed and looks to have been um, barricaded both in front and, well, you can't see past the door, but there's a large amount of debris and such that has been seemingly placed in front of it. I mean, should we just knock? Yes, perhaps ah. not you, Jax. I feel you might startle everyone inside. I walk up I walk up to the door and I just like pound my fist and I say Grendel Crown Anvil Is that that dwarf with the red hair? Thalkran, yes. You still alive in there? Mm-hmm. She opens the door. That we are. Oh, and there's cool. more of us now. Um, well, it's a good bit that's... of luck finding you. We were just thinking about making our way out. Well, good on you. We're, we're, uh... Come in, come in, come in. And she <clears throat> opens the door, and you see standing behind her three more dwarves, varying ages. One of them has a, a short crop beard that is a, a salt and pepper, and is wearing very, very thick glasses and a nose almost as long as a gnome's. And um, um, hair on one side of his face is completely uh, shaved. And there's a, a, a large uh, burn mark that's on there. And he's holding uh, what looks like a, peer, a pair of, uh, of um, uh, calipers that have been sharpened into some sort of rudimentary weapon. He's sort of looking at you all. And the other two, well, one of them is, is very young, a uh, very young uh, male dwarf. Uh, has just a bit of peach fuzz on his chin, but he's holding um, a, a pick. Uh, and he looks like he's very well muscled and he's wa- watching you all I, um, uh, warily. And the other one is very old with um, long uh, white braids uh, hanging down in the front and in the back. And his beard and his mustache are braided together. Um, and he's actually wearing um, some leather armor. And he's got uh, a short sword. And he's looking at you all, taking your measure. Um. You seem so to have done well for yourself. Well, I uh, I was out looking for food, as you know, and I managed to find a couple of our kin. So um, we're doing much better here than we were, but um, still, still feel pretty exposed here, up here on a on a. No, uh... and you. She brings you in, and oh, you so... look in, and she. You see, there's a uh, there's several dozen survivors, um, mostly women and children, some elderly, a couple of men who look like they've been wounded. Lots of bandages, um, bruises, and uh, you can see that there seems to be a bit of a preparation in place for uh, people getting ready to go. So, where did you have in mind to go? Oh. Well, you you said that the uh, high hall was uh, was where everyone was meeting up. We thought that sounded pretty good. We've got a and, couple and- of people here who suggested that a while back, and. Of course, I was I was too nervous to take them all out through the city, just by my lonesome. But now, now with these fellows and and with you, I suppose we could do it. Well, nah, no, I say you looks like we arrived just in time. I say my party and I were sent here by the by the Duke Raven Guard to uh, to escort you to that very place. He said, "Well, I don't think we'll be ready for a little while yet. If you if you want to take a rest, um, let you know when we're ready to go." Um, well, it's uh, what everybody wants, but you're welcome to what little we have. Emphasis on the little. All right, they're very simple cakes made of just flour and water that's been baked. She raises an eyebrow. That was you, I remember. Seems to be a nice area. Have you found in your searches any shops of manuscripts, arcanist supplies nearby that you recall? I know it's not what you're looking for, but search your memory. Would likely have a scroll or a mortar and pestle or something outside on the side. Hmm. You're right. I, I certainly wasn't looking for something like that, but uh, follow me. Oh, okay. And she starts taking you up the uh, the interior of this 
um, theater is mostly a gravel floor, but there's bleachers on on the ground level that are um, arranged in a way that everybody can see the stage, which is a about a 30 foot long and a 20 foot um, wide um, rectangle. That's one end of this space, and it's covered over with a four posts and a little bit of a roof. Um, and then the interior of the stage is completely open to the air, but uh, the bleachers, the further back you go, there is a little bit of a lip of a roof. And you can see on the second floor, there's actually, it looks like box seating with uh, curtains um, protecting the various uh, boxes from each other, making sure that people have a little bit of privacy. Um, she leads you up the bleachers and around into a, a spiral staircase that goes up to the very top of uh, the theater. You're standing on the, the upper a area, looking out. You're not quite um, so the the part of the theater that actually has the covered um, seating is is directly in front of the stage, and then to the sides it is again open seating. So you are sitting. You're standing on the top there, where you have a very good view of the city, and um, you look out over it. And she says, "I think that place right over there might be what you're looking for." And she points to um, a shop that looks like it has a scroll that is um, in the process of being rolled. And there's a, a looks like gold filigree that's been painted on the outside of the sign. Thank you. You're welcome. And as you're standing there, there's another. <laughs> as the uh, Eltorel sinks a few feet closer to doom and uh, from this high vantage point you can look out you can see the entire breadth of the city and you hear the cries sort of muffled of people who have experienced this many times but no matter how many times it happens it's still disconcerting and all of your friends sort of hold on to each other and grab various parts to stay um, standing and you can see the city as it sinks parts of it <laughs> And it sort of seems to bob for a second, like like a corpse on water. Just and as you are watching, there is a titanic roar as a gargantuan serpentine form blasts up from the ground like a breaching whale, no more than five hundred feet away. It just. <laughs> and it lands on its side, throwing up a tremendous cloud of dust and debris, and then begins to <laughs> burrow back down into the street. And uh, Grendel says, Mora didn't punch me in the eye. That was enormous. Um, maybe moving out of here isn't the best idea. Um, and behind you, you hear people stifling, terrified screams as this roar of this creature echoes through the streets. Go calm your people. I'll uh, um, uh, telepathically instruct the imp to summon Silas up to here. <laughs> Interesting. Silas, you've just recovered from the uh, latest tremor and hear this this roar, and instinctually uh, you look up, instinctually you look up to see uh, where Typhon is, and he kind of looks towards you, and just as he do, as you're looking at him, right in your field of view, appears an imp. Master Typhon would like to speak with you? Wait, did you say in between us? Yes. Oh, I didn't know he followed me all the way up. He's always with you. I, I meant I didn't know Silas followed me. All the no, way. no, the the imp, the he's the, the Silas is down below, and he looked up to look at you just as you were looking down to him, and then the, the imp oh, appears right in front right. of his face. Okay, I thought I was picturing more. I, I guess that makes sense. I was picturing more uh, stuff in between us, but yeah. either way, that's um, obnoxious and funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm Silas, and Typhon is okay with it. So. All right, Silas, what do you do? Tilt my head sideways. 
And then look up at Typhon. Like, like, what the hell is this? I just... I message him, just get up here. Grumble, grumble, mumble, mumble. Make my way up. I will... So, Silas, I don't know if there's any sort of pattern to the way the worms are cutting through the city, but you can see the way this one is breached, what it's cut across, the remaining streets. If we're in for a difficult task, if we have to bring these people all the way through all of this chaos. But look at the streets. Is there a way that makes more sense to you to go? I'm sure I don't have your intelligence or your companion's cunning. I don't have time to graph out, to map. I don't, it's not a, it's not a analysis. Just looking at it, looking at the paths, you know maps, you've seen, you've sketched cities before. And DM, I do have my cartographer's tools, including sure. the, what was it called? Elder Cartographer's uh, Glossography. Glossography, yes. yes. Um, make your, uh, make an intelligence roll and add your proficiency modifier. Yeah, I don't make it. Oh, hold on, intelligence roll. Ooh, That's a 19, 19. plus, what'd you say, proficiency or what? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, proficiency, but 19 is fine. Uh, yeah, okay. Based on the way you came, knowing that just before you attacked by the smaller worms, that a neighborhood behind you collapsed, and now looking at the uh, area that has been collapsed before you, you cannot go back the way you came. However, the way to the north, moving through, moving along, let's see, make sure I'm on the right, moving along this path, and then going up the, the Grand main, Promenade. The Grand Promenade. <laughs> the Grand Promenade. The Champs Elysees. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it should be available to you. <laughs> but nice. full of terrors. <laughs> it's dark and full of terrors. Okay, that's enough. Um, <laughs> oh my and God. <laughs> you, look, you look down and you can see, based on when the, uh, how the uh, creature is breaching, there's not much of a pattern per se, but it does seem to be thoroughly moving through the city. And it's only a matter of time before it finds this um, theater. Okay, so if we were to sketch some type of path going through, yeah. it would wind us up something yeah. like this. And you said I had a good view, and I know I'm not skilled in such things, but if I can use sort of deductive reasoning and Euler mathematics to try to uh, deduct efficient paths, I will do yeah. so. That, based on the destruction you see the way you've come, which was probably a safer route in terms of your cover, um, that way looks even more treacherous now than it did before. Uh, you could certainly attempt it. Um, so which which way looks to be the good way? So there's two ways. You can go back the way you came, which has now been altered a bit by debris and um, areas that are completely inundated with dust. Which was this kind of way. Yes. And then there is the way that leads you up the Grand Promenade to the um, Grand Cathedral, which uh, seems to be relatively clear. However, much more exposed. Gotcha. I relayed that to Typhon. <laughs> well, I don't. If you know if this a, will, I mean, so if, if it's a matter of trying to spend the least amount of time outside and not in between here and the cathedral, going up the Grand Promenade is definitely the better choice. If you're looking to be sneaky and um, you know not worry too much about how long this trip takes, trying to go back the way you came would be the better choice. Perhaps we could send message back now that 
we have Duke Ravenguard, we have a capable Seneschal or whatever he is, and a, uh, well, and a Hellrider, perhaps they could I'm, I'm here. meet us halfway. Oh, Rhea's here again. Here. Yeah. How many Sorry. people are we talking about? The the crowd grew since we left. Yeah. Oh, I'll come back down, downstairs so everyone can join in the yeah. planning. I'll, all right, so you're but, all but back DM, down. At, at a glance, there were 30 70. to 50 before. Now there are 70. I don't know that They've we can multiplied. be stealthy. They have. With, <laughs> with, <laughs> you left them alone. I don't know that we can be stealthy in any sort of way with 70 people. That's like that's Seems like, like moving a, a lawful protest down the streets. It's You can't just hide just that. Getting them there the fastest way possible is the best bet. My thought as well. It also seems to be the fastest way. Also, was that sound fastest we heard? What I thought it was. To be the fastest way. The fastest way seems to be the fastest way. Yeah, snozberries taste like snozberries. Um, it would seem like creating almost shield points. Warriors at the front, warriors to the side, warriors in the back. With the most vulnerable in the middle. And keep moving. And just simply dash. Agreed. Type on the size of this, it's hard to know how tough or uh, difficult it would be to fight, but based on the size that you saw, it would be a tremendous battle to stand and try and fight this thing. It could literally swallow three of you at once. And and where is the thing, approximately? Or... It's has it disappeared. It is disappeared okay. into the and approximately where into. was its last ODM? Where was the last eruption? Okay. Oh. Well that would be if we took the the northerly trail through the promenade, that would potentially who can predict a worm? Bird. Hmm. What do you do? I wonder. Grenda comes up to you, Arthur's. Well, uh, that settles it. Um, preparations be damned. We're ready to go now. Early worm gets the worm. The worm, I think. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So what are we doing? Grand promenade? Silas, I would show them the path just in case we get separated. Point out some landmarks. I actually pull out the map of Eltro, which I have, mm-hmm. and sketch out what I can based on what has changed from the map to the map of Hell. The uh, the um, landmarks will be there. The dwarf with the very long nose and the glasses and the sharpened calipers comes over and he looks down. You like, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be the best way. I think. Uh, smart lad. Silux looks to Typhon. Yes, he is. I have, uh, have um, no experience with cartography. Back in Baldur's Gate, I mapped everything that one can. Typhon, do you wish to try and grab some supplies? Uh, it was. Is it nearby-ish? It is within Impreach. I was gonna just. That was my idea. Just send the mm-hmm. to do it. Yep. <laughs> Let me know. Okay. Nice knowing you, boss. And he jumps off the uh, top of the um, uh, theater, turns invisible, and uh, you sort of uh, close your eyes and follow him, and he flies in, and it is a smorgasbord of myth- of uh, magical supplies. Um, fine inks, chalks, um, elegant quills, Um, high quality paper everything you could possibly need for the transcribing of scrolls and scrolls and um, spells some things in there might even be magical themselves although your imp would have no way of knowing could he take a guess (laughs) roll a percentile oh here we go roll up zero one come on low Oh. oh, oh! You cannot. 
he cannot find it. However, uh, the the it is easily apparent the chalk, the uh, paper, the ink, the things that you are looking for. He is able to gather up um, a good supply. Cool. It's about uh, about fifty uh, hundred feet away. <laughs> or not. All right, my friends. This is going to be a group skill check. Um, each one of you in turn will need to make a skill check based on whatever you think is going to be useful in this situation. Um, depending on what you choose, I will determine the DC based on how you describe you are using this particular skill. It, we need to get five successes out of seven. I, I I suspect that a stealth skill from Jax on all the rolls. Was no, you can only do kidding. one at a time. Kidding. So who Sur take... survival skill checks? So I should point out you. I should also point out you cannot repeat skills. Ah. Uh -huh. If you could figure out a way to use acrobatics to help move a large mass of people. So, who will be first? All right. So that will help you get through the building. How will that help the group? So you're going to use acrobatics to navigate. That is what I mean, but it, I'm having difficulty making the logic leap between acrobatics and navigating. And you're, you're talking about 70 people, Sean, yeah. right? Yes. Not just the party, but not just 70 the party. people, 70 people. And then DM, are we able to like any sort of guidance or other sort of? Sure. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very similar to this area. So that would definitely be perception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Falcon's gonna go ahead and like let's say put, put put a hand put a hand on Jax and say, "All right, keep your wits about you." And then fifteen. D4? D4 for guidance, yeah. Oh. 16. So you step out of the theater, looking around. You look to the south, and you see definitely not the best way to go. The path that has been chosen is the correct one. But as you look, you see one of the buildings that is directly in your path wavers a little bit, as if the foundation is not very strong the slightest bit of vibration could cause it to collapse. And so you lead everybody as they all pour out of this theater. Seven women holding children, men protecting their loved ones, old men and women clutching each other, moving as fast as they can, but far too slow for your taste. You set up people in front, you set up people behind and to the sides keeping as close an eye as you possibly can, jumping at every explosion, every slight tremor. You follow Jax as he makes a detour around this building, bringing you back onto the path. And just as the last group of people move, there's a and you see like a freight train just between you and the theater, the body of this worm just 
go down the street and the building <laughs> collapses. However, you are safe. That is one success. Who will go next? I'll go next. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so I want to go ahead and make a medicine check to make okay. sure that uh, the people are, like those who can walk, are able and healthy to walk and that they're then helping those who are injured or sick and that those who are injured or sick are then tended to in a way that they're able to move as quickly as they possibly can. Very nice. Make that medicine check. I will make this medicine check using my inspiration to roll at advantage. Very well. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. oh. So the, the so 21. 21 for that one. So you look, and as you see the people walking, you see definitely see that, that there are some more elderly and wounded people who are slowing the group down. And you, you move through and you look around and you see a couple of children who um, are pre preteens but look to be hardy and have a, a sort of a feral sort of a, uh, uh, I'm ready for this kind of look. They don't seem to be with any parents, but you snap your fingers and they come running over you. What? What do you want? Oh, so you seem pretty strong, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Are, are you really strong? Huh. Why don't you try me? I'll take right, you down. All right. So, I'll take you down. I'll take uh, this whole damn town down. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. So if you want to prove it, I say, I bet you, you can't help. So I bet. Do you think you can carry one person? I bet you can't carry one person. You probably need some help. Probably get like maybe two or three my, people. I've got my friends. Out. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll say, however many of you can help carry, however like as many people as possible. I see here. I mean, I don't know if we can carry people, but we can maybe help out. Yeah, we can help out. Oh uh, uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah. I'll tell so you what. You, I'll tell you what. Go ahead. One, <laughs> One who lends one who lends the most hand and say and gives the best aid to these people gets this and I twirl a little uh, war hammer in front of them and be like, hmm? "Who's Dwarven made?" Done. And he lets out a whistle and a bunch of kids come scurrying out from various corners of this group and he says, right, "We're going to help these people. We're going to try and, and make people go faster." And so the help is appreciated. He you see people the the. Uh, lads go and they are, are taking the weight of some of the older people moving on. They're, they're mostly just saying, hey, stop moving so slow. But they are <laughs> helping. Uh, you have identified the major elements that are slowing the group down and the group is able to move faster. And as you do, in a few blocks over, there's a <laughs> and another bits and pieces of the city collapse. And you are moving fast enough that you do not encounter any of the rubble or the smoke and dust that comes through the street. So your speed is not impeded. That is a second success. Who will go third? Catch me at the uh, high hall. How about that? <laughs> um, this I would like to put myself in the center of some of the most venerable uh, elderly who mm -hmm. are probably the most slow. Um, and I will use my sleight of hand to catch them if they are going to uh, trip, fall, uh, just to ensure that they are not slowing the group down with the speed at which they're walking. All right. The only issue I have with that, Isla, is that you are only one person and there are several elderly. You can definitely help some, but mm -hmm. it might not be as effective, depending on how high you are. And what was what was the skill you chose on that one? Slight Slide of hand. hand. It is it's, her... It's, it's, a, it's a stretch. Yeah. It's it a is... stretch. However, you have a ridiculously high modifier in that, so... I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna do it. You could do sleight of hand with like hand signals, like directing people. The 23, 23 is enough. So um, you stand in the middle of this group, sort of looking around, and you you are able to identify two or three people who, just looking at them, think, hmm, they look very steady on their feet, and as they take a step you see them start to fall and they drop a cane 
your hand darts out, you grab the cane, and another, you grab that cane. You are able to grab all the canes of these people as they are starting to fall, as the town, as the uh, area you're moving through is rumbling. You catch four people from falling, and it doesn't seem to have made the group go any faster, but it's definitely not slowed you down. Again, there's more rubble as you see coming somewhat closer this worm serpentining along the path that you have already moved. You are halfway with three right. successes. Or are we halfway to the location? We are halfway at the end of your journey. Um, I'm going to make a performance check with using my inspiration to um, make a, a speech to sort of embolden the people who seem right. very scared. The DCs are going up. Roll your oh. performance. A 29. 29. But I'll, I'll still what fish. do you say, Persephone? <laughs> um, once more into the breach, dear friends. Very once nice. More, or close the wall up with our Faerun dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, hold hard the breath, and bend with every spirit to his full height. On, on, you noblest citizens of El Terrell. Very nice. Um, your speech is emboldening. And you see people nodding and saying, you're repeating your words to themselves as they pass you. That's right. Onto the breach. And they begin to move with a will. And as you come around the corner onto the uh, uh, Grand Promenade, you see far in the distance the High Hall and everyone's spirits somewhat lift. And they break into a faster pace. One moment, please. Oops. Sorry about that. And that will bring us to the final skill check. Who Sweet. is taking for I guess myself or Silas. But... Yep. Out of out of curiosity, have we seen any? Uh, when I was either on top of the theater or recently, have we seen any sort of evidence of devil patrols, like anything flying overhead, anything like that? Um, make a perception check. Okay. <laughs> this is not your check, right? No, I like I, I, just as a general idea. It seems like we haven't heard from any devils for a long time. You have not. Sixteen. Um, you have not seen very many uh, devil patrols. They seem to be in some other part of the city. Maybe they are avoiding this creature. Um, I, would. I don't know. Maybe I can, since this was kind of our plan that started all of this off, maybe I could consult with Silas and look for um, just as quickly as we can identifying things like temples, maybe bathhouses or things along the main stretch that would um, potentially contain identifying things that would contain more underground structures that ha are more prone to collapse as opposed to um, maybe even heavier buildings that would be built on a sort of um, more sturdy foundation. <laughs> that so we it's going to go be more perception based on, I mean, in order to do an investigation like that, it's going to involve going into the buildings and really searching them. Right. Um, my, my hope was looking at the detailed map and saying, oh, temple, likely catacombs. That's a bathhouse. There's probably piping. Nope, nope, ah, not there, not there. On kind the of map. Looking Got at it. it with the map. It's, and yeah, it's I could actually use my background as a folk hero. Rustic hospitality. Since you come from the ranks of the common folk, you fit among them with ease. You can find a place to hide, rest, or recuperate among commoners. Not that that means I can spot buildings, but I'm used to looking for things and getting shelter. Also, I'm skilled. I'm what, uh, what proficient is the skill with survival. I was looking for investigation with that, like by by looking at the map and hopefully. And also, I, as a player, noticed that there are trees, and I feel like directing them also perhaps over the rooted 
um, soil. It might be like more like less likely to collapse under them rather than a perhaps a masonry okay. um, sewered street. That's that's right. like what I was so thinking. You're using <laughs> investigation to look at the map to see if there is a clue to a better route to take. Yes. Okay. Silas, is that cool with you? That was my you, idea. You, you got a good proficiency yep. there, fella. I got a seven. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. I'll offer Alrighty. you guidance with that as well. This is a hide and see. Okay. Uh, oh, it didn't oh. roll over to that too. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so close. That's an 18 right there. That's going to be a total of uh, like 28. The there ground beneath you begins to vibrate and then oh. shake and then to rip apart as dread fills your heart. Chaos explodes around you and the demonic worm, its quasi-human face folded and compressed behind an impossibly wide, distended jaw, rears up out of the streets and towers above you. At the apex of its rise, the head twists and contorts around until it regards you all, hanging suspended in the air for a possibly long instant. From the sky streaks a meteor made of dark flame and iron, with a concussive blast you feel in your teeth. It smashes into the head of the beast, forcing it into the side of a nearby building, which crumbles under its weight. Your ears ring from the beast's bellow of pain, but a battle cry filled with rage, pure and primal, rings out above it. Zariel, her feet planted firmly on the back of the worm, her dark wings spread wide, her flaming halo blazing with fury, brings her massive hammer down again, sending out a blast of cold power as the two of them disappear into the rubble, rumbling down into the ground. Your investigation check has been a success, Typhon, and you are able to quickly move people through, having them go from one heavily uh, rooted area to another that seems to have been reinforced around as people begin to sprint as fast as they can down the Grand Promenade, people tripping over each other. You, everybody grabs as many people as they can, trying desperately to make it to the High Hall. That is five successes. I need one final skill check for all the marbles. And it will be Silas. What is the skill check? Oh, oh, Does anybody crazy. have inspiration to give him? Okay, I'll give you guidance, Silas. <laughs> you give me guidance, okay. And uh, okay. DM, I, I uh, passed you a note on Discord. I, I, I'm too into gonna this to pray for it. that. It's All a right. note about what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, as we're rolling, say a prayer uh, to Vandria. And I'm actually going to, just for the record, read the survival skill, which... I, I could do intimidation better, but I don't think I can intimidate anybody down the roll. Uh, the GM might ask you to make a survival check to follow tracks, hunt wild game, guide your group through. So I'm going to go with survival, which I'm proficient in, and I'm going to pray to Vandria for her grace and use a little bit of that. Uh... DM, does that make sense? It does. So I get to roll that with advantage as I glow oh. with the grace of Vandria. All the and I get guidance. All the people <laughs> running past you, you Is see a D4? stop in the middle. Yep. As he 24. Focuses. 24. That is everything. That's what I got. All right. People are moving past you. You are praying. You begin to glow. And a wave of energy comes, sweeping everyone around you just a bit faster. And a mighty worm rears up again. The dark angel weaving around it like a helix, knocking it back and forth with a series of impossibly fast blows. At the apex of the worm's ascent, Zariel soars into the air above it, her burning gaze imperious. Her left hand shoots out, detaching from her arm at the end of a furiously extending chain. It flies past the worm's open jaw and delves deep into its throat. 
the creature begins to writhe back and forth like an enormous fish desperate to escape its doom, but Zarya remains fixed in place, her wings beating furiously, the skin over her muscles gleaming brightly. There is a mechanical crunching sound as the worm freezes and Zariel's snarl takes on a mean of satisfaction. This city is my prize and no others, she hisses as the chain begins to winch back, link by link. For a moment, it seems as if she will lift the massive creature completely off the ground. But then there is a horrible ripping noise. A plaintive wail of agony as the worm's innards come loose and Zariel shrieks triumphantly into the sky, dragging its bowels behind her. Black, loathsome ichor spills from the open mouth of the worm and rains down around you. The corpse falls, crushing another building as torrents of bile fill the streets. Silas, almost everyone was out of the way, but not all. A man rushes past, his wife's hand in his own, but he stumbles and gasps in horror as her arm detaches from her torso, turns itself inside out, and begins creeping up his hand. One of the dwarfs claws at his face as his beard pushes its way into his mouth, muffling his screams as it moves through his skull and out of his eye sockets, his eyeballs protruding from his face on stalks of sinew and hair. A woman gazes at you in confusion as her skeleton and tissue simply steps out of her skin, which floats away as if on an invisible breeze. She walks towards you a few steps, her mouth gurgling a barely intelligible, What? before she collapses at your feet. All around you, people writhe in agony, the demonic blood corrupting any flesh it can find, with horrific results. However, you and most of the people from the Swan Theater arrive at the High Hall. You step within its doors. It's shut behind you. That will be where we end our session.